Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, a quite exciting news for you all. In this video, we are going to implement an end-to-end -end NLP project and the project name is text summarization. Many of you were requesting for this particular project. Why this project is quite amazing because we will be implementing each and everything with respect to pipelines, with respect to components, and we'll also be making sure that we try to deploy this with the help of GitHub Actions. So Bappy, who is uh, one of my friend and who is working in iNeuron will be explaining you each and everything in this specific project step by step. Again, it is somewhere around two to three hours of video. So please make sure that you practice it line by line, learn how to write the code and how to implement this. So I hope you will like this particular video and make sure you watch this video till the end. Thank you. Let's go ahead. Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be implementing one amazing project called end-to-end -end text summarization. I think if you already know, uh, there are huge demand in the market of this natural language processing field. So if you can develop these kinds of end-to-end -end project, I think it is going to help you to crack any kinds of NLP interviews. And uh, it is going to uh, give you the entire idea whenever you are trying to build any kinds of NLP project, okay? So definitely it is going to help you to uh, crack any kinds of uh, interviews, okay? You will be attempting in future. Uh, so I have designed this project such a way so that actually you can learn each and every components of a project, okay, whenever you are trying to implement any kinds of end-to-end -end project. Even I have designed one uh, unique, uh, you can say, template, okay, uh, of this end-to-end -end project. So uh, so that actually you can use this kinds of template of your any kinds of end-to-end -end project, okay, you will be implementing in the future. And at the last of the project, actually, I will also show you like how you can perform CI/CD deployment because it is very much important after implementation, okay, uh, of any kinds of project, you need to uh, do th uh, this kinds of deployment. So uh, I will show you like CI/CD deployment. So it is going to give you the broad idea, okay? So guys, I will be using a uh, transformer-based model in this project. So we'll be using Hugging Face API. So this entire video is going to be totally amazing. And here actually I'll be using GitHub for committing my code because let's say whenever you are trying to uh, implement any uh, bigger project at that time code management is like very much important. So I will show you like how we can uh, do these kinds of uh, like GitHub commit, how we can use uh, GitHub, okay, uh, simultaneously with our implementation. So I think it is going to give you the like uh, entire idea of the GitHub, okay. So I'm expecting you have the GitHub account at least. So guys, uh, we are going to perform lots of things in this video. So uh, I will suggest just stay with me and uh, try to implement with me as well. I think it is going to be fun. So guys, uh, let me discuss uh, what are the things actually we are going to cover throughout this entire video, okay? So guys, actually we'll be implementing something called end-to-end text summarization. I think you all are familiar with text summarization, what is text summarization and all about. If you don't know, I will discuss what is text summarization. I will show you some demo, okay? So actually we'll be discussing the introduction of this project, uh, definitely, because uh, uh, we'll be doing text summarization. So first of all, we need to know what is text summarization, what are the things actually we are going to do, okay? Then we'll be uh, say, uh, like setting up our GitHub repository because as I already told you, I'll be using GitHub, okay, uh, to do my code management. So this uh, GitHub repository setup is important, okay. Then uh, we'll be uh, doing the project template creation because uh, uh, before implementing the project, we need to set up the template, okay, because template is needed. Uh, otherwise, how you will get to know what, what is the format, uh, okay. I will be following uh, what is the code format you will be following okay what is the format uh, so what is the folder structure actually will be following okay so this is very much important what i feel like then after that we'll be doing the project setups and uh, we'll be doing the requirements installation like uh, i as i already told you i'll be using hugging face api so to use hugging face api okay we'll be installing transformer libraries okay uh, so everything we'll be doing in our local local machine okay uh, so you can also perform in the, uh, this thing actually in the google uh, collab itself it's completely fine but uh, here actually we'll be doing the entire uh, like end-to-end -end project implementation so i'll uh, show you everything in local uh, okay local setup so if you know local setup i think you can also move to the cloud part okay uh, it is like very much easy then uh, we'll be also discussing the logging module utils module exception module so these are the module actually very much needed whenever you are trying to uh, implement any end-to-end -end project okay then we'll be discussing the project overflows, okay, like uh, where to start and how to start, okay, which line uh, or which uh, components you need to write first, okay, so everything I'll be discussing about. Then actually we'll be doing the notebook experiment for all the components, okay, uh, we'll be implementing, let's say we'll be implementing the data ingestion components, data validation components, data transformation components, okay, model trainer components. Then at the last we'll be doing the model evolution components, okay, so these are the components, actually we'll be doing the notebook experiment, okay. Why notebook experiment is required? Because let's say when 
whenever uh, you are trying to implement the actual uh, you can say components okay before writing the modular coding if you do this kinds of uh, notebook experiment then you will get the idea like yeah this thing is working and that's how actually i'll be implementing okay so before implementing any modular coding just try to do notebook experiment first okay so so what i feel like this approach is very much effective okay and uh, it is like uh, understandable also so it will give you the broad idea of your code implementation okay then after notebook experiment actually we'll be uh, writing our actual modular coding okay uh, so uh, for this actually we'll be uh, using python object oriented concepts okay then i will be implementing the training pipeline so uh, all the training pipeline i will be integrating together so that if you just hit uh, one uh, route okay so it will start the entire training so it will first of all start the data ingestion then it will start the data validation then it will start the data transformation then it will uh, pick the model it will uh, do the model training okay then it will do the model evaluation and then we'll be getting our model okay so that's how we'll be designing the entire training pipeline then after that actually we'll be also creating the prediction pipeline because after creating the tra training pipeline we need to also do the prediction okay so we, uh, we, for this actually we need also prediction pipeline so we'll be doing the prediction pipeline as well as we'll be implementing the user app okay let's say uh, i'm the user i don't know anything about uh, this uh, code implementation and all about so what i will do i will uh, use one ui okay uh, one simple ui so there actually i will uh, just uh, give the text and uh, if i just uh, click on submit button then it will give me the summarize okay uh, I think you have seen this kinds of application already so we'll be uh, building this kinds of uh, application using first api okay then uh, after that actually uh, at the end we'll be doing the ci cd deployment of our project on the aws cloud okay we'll be using amazon web service cloud to do the uh, ci cd deployment so for this actually i'll be using github action okay as a ci cd uh, tool so yes guys this is the entire uh you can say agenda of this video we'll be uh, doing okay and uh, i think uh, this is going to be totally amazing because because see i'm going to cover lots of things and these are the core components of a project wherever you are trying to implement any end-to-end -end project okay so i will uh, request you just try to stay with the video uh, okay till the end and try to learn all the concepts okay whatever i will be teaching you and i will be writing each and every line in front of you okay i may copy some of the code from my other screen but i will explain each and everything okay in front of you like what is happening uh, okay now guys you can ask me what would be the prerequisite for this video so uh, here actually i'm expecting you are familiar with the python programming at least you know the object oriented concepts okay because we'll be doing the modular coding and here i'll be using object oriented programming okay definitely then i'm expecting you are uh family with the natural language processing co concept at least the basics concept actually you know like uh, what is uh, nlp and all about okay and uh at least actually actually you know that it, like the data processing and all okay at least i'm expecting you know this other thing and uh it is good if you have understanding on this uh, hugging face library okay if you don't have understanding it's completely fine i will uh explain okay but i'm expecting you know hugging face a little bit okay uh and uh you should have aws account definitely because i'm going to use aws okay and uh if you want to do the deployment so i'm expecting you have this account and at the last uh the most uh, important things you need your dedication so just put your dedication as much as you can okay try to stay with me try to implement this project with me okay then i think you will be more confident okay after this implementation and uh you can uh attempt any kinds of nlp interview i think you can crack any kinds of nlp interview okay so yes guys uh, this is all about and uh, this is the prerequisite and now now guys let me give you the brief introduction of me my name is bhakti ahmed bappi and i am a data scientist and lecturer with more than two years of working experience in the field of machine learning deep learning computer vision and natural language processing and if you want to connect with me uh, on my social media so these are the link of my social media so you can connect with me anytime okay uh, if you have any query if you have uh, any doubt okay so you can connect me uh, anytime okay i will try to help you and i also operate one youtube channel called ds with bappi so you can also follow me there okay so whenever i get time i try to uh, like create uh, any kinds of like you can say youtube videos okay uh, on this data science computer vision national language processing okay machine learning python these are the thing so uh yes guys uh this is all about i think uh you are gonna enjoy a lot okay so this was the introduction uh okay uh, of our project and all about so now let's uh start our implementation okay uh but before that actually i want to show you like what is text summarization okay so i'll uh, give you some of the demo then actually we'll be doing our uh github repository setup so guys if you come to google and just search about text summarization okay text summarization text summarizer online 
there are some online tool let me let me show you some demo so let me open this tool okay it is from uh, this quill bot so they have developed this text summarizer and they have published it okay now let's say you, you uh, what is text summarization actually text summarization is nothing but uh, let's say if you have a big uh, paragraph or big composition and you want to make it summarize okay like uh, you just only want to know the uh, core information okay regarding the story so what you can do you just uh, put the text here so uh, in the back end actually it will uh, summarize the text and it will give you the core idea okay uh, uh, of the story so let me copy one text so what i will do i will search about uh, let's say i will just i will search about open ai okay or let's say hugging face because here we'll be using hanging press okay hanging press transformer model so let me open up one link and let's say i want to summarize the text so what i will do i will copy the entire text or uh, this text is not uh, readable so what i will do i will take a new text english story okay so now let's say i i want to summarize this text so i'll just copy and i will come here and here i will just paste my text okay yeah now if i click on summarize button so after some time see this is the summarization okay and here you can actually you can uh, set the length like uh uh like if you want like some bigger uh, output okay so at that time you just increase this length and if you want shorter output so you can decrease the length okay now if i do resize resummarize now see now text is more here okay now if i want to decrease so i can also do it okay now if i again do the summarize see this is my summarization so yes guys i think you got it what is text summarizer okay so this thing actually will be implementing from scratch okay and uh, everything will be doing end to end okay and uh, for this actually we'll be using a uh, transformer based model okay from the hugging face itself and uh, this model is already trained on a bigger data set uh, so i uh, will be training this uh, we'll be fine tuning this model on top of our custom data okay so uh, yes guys this is the demo i think you got it what's take summarizer so uh, now actually what we can do we can uh, set up our github repository okay before starting our implementation so guys uh, let's uh, create our github repository so i will uh, go to my github account so you just also open up your github account so here i will click on uh, your repositories okay so let me create one new repository so i'll click on new and first of all you need to provide the name so what i will do i will give text summarizer okay text summarizer okay you can give any name okay it's up to you so in this case i have given text summarizer uh text summarizer project okay let's give and uh i will make this repository as public okay you can also make it private if you want if you want to keep it as private you can also do it i will add readme file and uh, let's add also git ignore okay so i'm using python programming language so i'll use i will select python and license wise you can select any license so i'll take uh, this mit license okay now i'll just simply uh, click on create repositories okay so my repository creation is done so what i will do i will clone these repositories in my local machine so i'll just click on code and i'll just copy this link address okay so make sure you have selected https okay don't select a SSS, okay so i'll uh, click on http and i'll copy the link i will open my folder so here i will clone my uh, project okay uh, so i will open my terminal you can also open up your terminal your git bash okay uh, uh, i think you already have the git bash installation okay in your system uh, so here actually what i will do i will just write git clone i'll paste the link and uh, let me hit enter so it will clone my repositories okay so this is the folder okay i will open the folder and these are the files are available okay now i will redirect here so i'll just write cd uh which is nothing but text summarizer project okay so cd means you are changing the directory to this folder okay now i'm inside this folder now if i just write ls here so you can see all the files okay 
uh, it presented here. Now let me clear the terminal. Okay, so here actually I'll uh, open my VS Code. So to open up your VS Code, if you have already VS Code installed, just right click and uh, click on Show More option. Okay, so here you, you will see the option. Uh, and if you're using terminal, so from the terminal itself, just write code space dot. Okay, if you just write code space dot, it will open the VS Code here. Uh, so in this case, actually, I'm using VS Code because I uh, like this VS Code. Okay, uh, if you have PyCharm, you can also do it on PyCharm or any other code editor you are using. Okay, you can do it there. Okay, no issue with that. Okay, so this is the welcome screen. So I'll just uh, close it. Okay, so here actually we'll be uh, uh, writing all the code. So the first thing actually, uh, what we need to do, we need to create the template. Okay, template of our project. Like uh, in the template, actually, uh, we'll be writing the project uh, entire structure. Like what would be the folder structure and what would be the file structure. Everything we'll be writing. And if we run this file, so it will automatically create our project folder structure. So here we don't need to create manually the folder. Okay, so let's say if I tell you, I uh, what you need to do, you need to create uh, two folders and inside that you need to create two files. What you will do, you will click here, create the folder again inside that you will be creating the file, but it will uh, take time a lot. Okay. So instead of that, what we will do, we'll uh, create this folder structure in the Pythonic way. Okay. So there actually we'll be writing one uh, file called template.py and inside template.py we'll be writing all the logics. Okay. For our uh, project folder structure and everything. So I'll create one file called template.py. Template.py. Uh, now inside this template.py, I will write all the logic. So first of all, I will import some of the libraries. So I'll import uh, ways. Okay. Then I need uh, path library from path lib. So I'll just write path lib import path. Okay. Then I also need Python inbit login import login because uh, because I want to log all the information, okay, uh, during runtime as well. So that that's why I need logging, okay. Then the first thing actually, what I need to do, I need to create my login stream. So I'll just write logging or uh, dot basic info. Uh, no, uh, it is basic config. Uh, there is a function called basic config, okay. So inside that, uh, first of all, I will uh, mention my log level, okay. So level equal to, I'll just write logging dot info it should be information related log only okay then i want to specify the format of my log so format equal to uh, i usually follow this format okay uh, so let me discuss like what is the format first of all let me write so percentage first of all i need ascii time okay then uh, i need uh, uh, masses Let's give uh, let's give only ASCII time and message. Okay, uh, later on whenever we'll be creating our custom log. At that time, I will add some more information. So let me keep it. And if you see, guys, I I was getting some suggestion uh, because I have installed tab nine. Okay, so if you just go here, extension. Uh, okay, this market. So here just starts about tab nine. Okay, so this is that tool. This is the AI tool. Okay, so it will give you the suggestion. So I think you have already used GitHub Copilot. So it is the similar tool you can talk about, but uh, it will give you the suggestion. Uh, it will not generate the exact code, but at least uh, it will help you to like uh, write your faster code. Okay. So that's why I prefer this tool. Okay. I have installed. Okay. Here, if you see. So yeah, so this is my log string. Now here, first of all, I need to specify my project name. So I'll just write project underscore name. So, so guys, here the project structure actually I'm I'm going to implement. So first of all, actually we'll be creating one folder called src like source. Inside source actually, uh, it will have your project name. Okay, inside the project name, inside the project folder, it will contain all the components. Okay, so that's actually uh, you need to create the project folder structure. Okay, so let me first of all create and I will tell you like how I'm going to create. So in this case, my project name is text uh, summarizer. So let's give text summarizer only. Okay, now list of file I need to write list of file as files and folder I want to create here. So I'll just uh, take one variable or list of file. Okay, so it is going to be list. So inside that I'll mention all the files and folders actually I need. So the first thing actually I'll create uh, one folder called dot github. Okay, 
uh, I will tell you like what is the use of this dot github. Uh, so I will use this dot github whenever we'll be doing the deployment, CI CD deployment. So here actually we just write our CI CD related YAML file, okay? Uh, automatic file. So it will help you to do the CI CD deployment. Let's say you want to uh, commit your code in your GitHub, okay? So whenever you will do the commit, it will automatically take your code from your GitHub and it will do the deployment, okay, in your cloud. So that's why this dot github is important, okay? So dot github. So inside that, I need another folder called workflows, okay? So workflows. It should be workflows, I guess. Okay. Inside that, I will create one uh, hidden file called dot git uh, keep. Okay. Because if you commit this code in your GitHub, so empty folder won't be uploaded. So in the folder, you should have some file. So that's why I have created this dot git uh, keep file. Uh, it's a like you can say hidden file. Okay. Later on, I will delete it. Uh, okay. Whenever I will be creating my actual YAML file. Now, this thing actually I will create first. Then what I need uh i will create one folder called src so let's keep f string so here i'll create one folder called src sorry i think it should be f string like that src slash inside that i will create my project folder name okay so project project name then inside that i will create one constructor file okay uh, constructor file you need because uh, this thing actually I'll install as my local package. Uh, let's say I want to import something from any folder. Let's say I have created one folder here called uh, uh, text summarizer. Inside that I have created some components. Okay, so what I will do, I will just write from text summarizer import this thing. Okay, so to do these kinds of import operation, you need to install this uh, local uh, like this folder as my local package. Okay, uh, and if you want to install as local package. Uh, that time actually this constructor file is needed so uh when uh whenever you will be doing the installation of your local package it will look for this constructor file whenever this constructor file is present okay uh that folder will consider as my local package so that's why this uh init file is important okay so first of all i will create this init file then i'll copy the same thing then after that inside that i will create one uh, folder called components okay compo components inside components again i will create one constructor file okay because components is going to be another folder that is going to be my another local package okay so that's why i need this constructor file then after that i will also create another uh folder called utils okay so here actually i'll keep all my utils related code utility related codes okay so this is the utils and again i will create one constructor file okay inside utils then uh, inside utils instead of constructor i will create another file called common okay inside this common file actually i'll write all my uh, utility so i'll name it as uh, common.py okay i think it's fine so as of now this thing uh, might be a little bit conf confusing okay uh, to you uh, like what are the things actually we are creating but whenever i will end up with the uh, like project template creation okay whenever i will start the writing each and every components this thing would be like very much uh, uh, like you can say uh, clear okay in your mind so as of now just stay with me and try to create this thing okay i'll explain each and every components whatever i will be doing here okay so now this thing is done then i will uh, create my login so i'll create one login folder and again i will create another constructor file inside login Then after login, I will create another folder called config. Again, it will contain this constructor file. Now I will create another uh, file inside co config called configuration.py. Configuration.py. Then I will create another folder called pipeline because it will contain our trading and prediction pipeline. And uh, this is going to be another folder. So I'll add this constructor here. Then I will create another folder called entity. And it will contain another constructor file. And uh, last folder I will create called constant. constants okay so don't worry about i will discuss everything what is constant what is entity what is pipeline everything i will discussing about 
So that's why I told you uh, whenever you are trying to implement any bigger project or end to end project, uh, these are the core components is required. Okay. Then after that, uh, I'll create one uh, folder here called config. This is going to be another uh, config. Okay. And inside that, I will write my config dot yaml. Then I will create another file called params.yaml. So here I'll keep all my model related parameter. Okay. Then I will create uh, app.py. Similarly, I need uh, main.py. Like what are the files you need basically in a project? Everything you can mention here. So it will uh, create automatically by one chance. Okay, you don't have to create it manually. Then uh, I will also integrate Docker. So I need a Docker file. So basically, we'll uh, build one Docker image of our source code and we'll uh, do the deployment, okay, of the image in our uh, EC2 machine in our AWS, okay. So that's why we'll be using Docker in this project as well. So I'll for this actually, I need a Docker file. And uh, And I I will also create one file called require mens.txt. So it will contain all the requirements of our project. Then I need setup.py. So basically, it will help you to the uh, to do these kinds of uh, local package setup. Okay. Now, one folder I need called resource. So this resource will contain all the notebook experiment. Okay. So initially I will create one notebook called trials dot IP when B. Okay. So yes, case I think these are the folders and files are required as of now. Uh, if, if I required later on, I will create it. Okay. Manually, no issue. As of now, this thing is fine as a basic template. Okay. Now let me write the logic like how it will create it. Okay. So for this, actually, I'll write some Python code. So first of all, I will look through my list. So I'll just write for uh, file path. File path in list of files. Okay. That means I'm looping through this list. First of all, I need to convert the path to my specified uh, operating system format. Because here, if you see, I'm using Windows, but I have given forward slash here. Okay. So sometimes what happens actually, if you are not handling these kinds of path, okay. Uh, so it will throw error. Okay. In Linux, actually, we use forward slash, but in Windows, actually, we use backward slash. Okay. To handle these kinds of uh, slash or handle these kinds of path, there is a library called path library. Okay. I've already imported. So I'll use the path library for this. Okay. So what I will do, I'll just write file path. And uh, this file path actually I'll pass to my path uh, function. Okay, this file path. So it will give me all the path one by one. This path all all the path one by one. And this path actually I'll pass to my path. Okay, and it will give me the first of all it will detect the operating system I'm using. Based on that it will provide the path. Okay, so for this let me give you one example. So first of all let me clear my terminal. So I'll activate my Python here. Okay, let's say I'll import my path library. So how I did, how did I import it? So I'll just write from pathlib. Okay, import path. Let's say I, I will define one path here, path equal to, I have one path, let's say config slash uh, config dot yaml. Okay, so this is one path I have. So what I will do, I will uh, pass this path to my path function okay now if i hit enter see now it is give me it is a windows path okay it is automatically detecting okay it is a windows path let's say you are running this code in linux so at the time it will give you this is the linux path that's actually it can handle these are the path issue okay so that's why i'm using this thing so i'll exit yeah so after handling the path I will uh, split it because as you can see, it will, it is uh, containing the folder as well, uh, as well as the file file as well. Okay. So what I need to do, I need to separate out my folder and file. Okay. Because first of all, I want to create the folders. Then inside that I will create the file. Okay. So for this, what I will do, I will write file 
directory and i need file name so the function actually I'm, I'm going to use it will return two things one is like your file directory one is like your file name okay so i'll use west.path.split so there is a split function it will basically uh, do the split of this thing and it will return my file directory and my file name okay so let me show you this thing as well so yeah i will open my terminal again i'll just write python so first of all i need to import a west let's define one uh, path path equal to again i will take the same thing config slash config dot yaml okay now i'll just write west dot path dot split okay inside that i will pass my path now see it is returning two things one is my folder one is my file okay separately so i'll take this folder inside my file directory and i will take this file name okay this file name inside my file file name variable okay so that's why i'm using this thing now first of all what i need to do i need to check okay whether this uh, uh, file directory is uh, not empty okay because see if this variable is empty that means there is no folder okay that, that time actually i won't be running that logic okay and if it is not empty then i will run this one so for this what i will do i'll just write if my file directory is uh, not equal okay empty so i'll create a directory so i'll use ways dot make drs okay so here i'll pass my file directory and there is a parameter you need to set called x is equal to two let's say you, you have uh, let's say you already have the folder okay so it, it won't be creating the folder okay if it is not available then it will create okay then i will log the information so i'll just write log dot info okay uh, basically i want to see the log in my terminal so that's why i'm setting up my log so i'll just write creating directory I'll mention my file directory here for the file. File name. Okay, that's how you can use f string. Okay, if you want to integrate uh, more than one variable. Now my uh, folder creation is done. Okay, so after creation of the folder, uh, I also need to create the file. Okay, this file inside the folder. So for this, I'll write another logic. So here I will first of all give one else condition. So first of all I will check this file is not exist. Okay. So for this I'll just write not waste dot path dot exist file path or I will also check the size of the file. Okay, so for this, I'll write OS dot path dot. There is a method called get size. Why I am checking the size of the file? Let me tell you. So I'll just give file path equal equal zero. Okay, if my file size is zero, then I will create the file. Okay, so with open. file path i will open it in writing mode as f and here actually i only want to create the file so that's why i will just pass it because i'm not i'm not uh, doing anything inside my file okay then after that i will log the information so login dot info so let me give the log so create Creating file, creating empty file. File path. Okay. Else, what I will do? 
RTL. I'll copy the same lock. File name is already exist. Okay. So basically what I have done, so let me show you. I'll open my terminal. So let's say if I want to check the size of this file, okay. So let me show you. So I'll just write OS dot path dot get size. I think this is get size. Yeah, get size. And inside that, I will name this my readme. Dot md file location. And now, if I hit enter, okay, uh, it's giving error because my file name is not uh, correct. So it should be readme, okay, not R E A D readme. Yeah. Now, if I hit enter, see, it's giving some. Uh, size of my file because it is containing some text. Okay. Now let's say if I delete this text. Okay. Now if I execute the same thing again, now see it is giving completely zero. That means let's say if I have some file here and it is already contained some code. Okay. And again, if I run this template.py, so what it will do, it will replace the same file. Okay. And I will lose my code. So to overcome this thing, I will uh, add this statement. Like I'll first of all check the file size. If my file size is not empty, okay, that means there are some code, okay, and I am not going to replace the file, okay, so it will ignore that file and it will create the other file, okay, but if it is empty, then it will replace it, so that's why I need this. Now, let's say if I create uh, take this thing again, if I run it, so it will give me again some, uh, like you can say, value, okay, so that's why actually you need to handle now. I think I have completed. Uh, the logic and now uh, let me run this template.py and uh, let me show you uh, it will create these are the files and folder automatically okay so for this i will open my terminal again first of all i will exit i will clear my terminal and let's run this template.py i'll just write python template.py okay now see there is nothing okay there is you only three to four for uh, like files you can see now if i execute this template.py it will automatically create these are the folders and files okay here so let me run. See, guys, it has automatically created my folder structure. Okay, it is amazing, right? Now, see, it's just a one time effort you have done. Okay, and in future, let's see if you want to add some more file. Okay, let's say I want to add test.py here. Test.py. Okay, now see, test.py is not present here. Now, if I again run my template.py, see, it will create my test.py here somewhere, I think. Okay, uh, I haven't given the comma here now if i run it again see guys test.py has been created okay so you can add as much as folder files you can okay if you want it in your project you can add it okay so i'll remove the test.py it's not required for me okay now let's say uh in my readme file there were some text see it hasn't replaced here although i have run two times okay but if if it doesn't contain any text okay then at a time it will replace it okay so that's why it's needed okay so we have successfully created our template now see all the things we have created successfully first of all we have created the dot github folder inside that we have created workflows then inside that we have created dot git file in keep file okay then config dot yaml we have created successfully then resource inside resource we have created trials okay uh this thing i'll delete it has generated automatically i think okay now inside src see src we have created our constructor file see this is the constructor file okay then we have config configuration components so inside components we'll be creating the components constant entity login pipeline okay everything we have created successfully and you can see app docker file license okay uh, params requirement to txt everything we have created successfully okay that means our project template creation is done so this is going to be our template of our project okay so uh, now actually what i need to do i need to uh, uh install and set up my uh, requirements of this project okay so let's do the requirement installation let's do the project setup first of all okay 
So guys, before writing our requirements and doing this project setup, uh, what I need to do, I need to commit these are the changes in my GitHub, okay? Because see, we have created lots of files and folders. We have uh, already completed our project folder structure, okay? So let's commit these are the changes in our GitHub. So either you can do it from here. So VS Code provides uh, this kinds of uh, automatic uh, tool as well. So you just write the commit message here and just commit it and upload your code, okay? It will automatically do it. But uh, if you don't want to do it like that, so you can open up your Git Bash, okay? So here, just write git add, okay, git add space dot, then just write your git commit, commit hyphen m, give a message, so I'll just write folder, structure, add it, okay. Uh, then I'll just push my code, so I'll just write git push, origin main, okay. So this is my main branch, that's why. Now if I push it. Okay, so it's done now. Let's go to our GitHub and refresh here. See, guys, okay, everything has been uh, uploaded here. Okay, now uh, we are ready to write our uh, requirements. Okay, and let's do the project setup first of all. So, before uh, doing the project setup, uh, what I need to do, I need to create one virtual environment. Okay, so virtual environment is needed because it's recommended whenever you're trying to build any new project just try to create one new virtual environment okay on top of it so what i will do uh first of all i will create one environment so i'll just write conda create hyphen in so this is the command to create the environment i'll name the environment as uh, text okay text summarization so i'll just write uh, text s okay that means text summarization uh you can give the full name also, but I will keep this name text as that means text summarization. And now let's uh, define the Python version. So I'll just write Python. I'll take Python 3.8 uh, hyphen Y. That means I want to uh, like make it as a uh, uh, hyphen Y means like you want to uh, accept. Okay. Uh, like you want to uh, create this Python 3.8 new environment. Okay. Now if I press enter, see it will create the environment here. I'm expecting you are already familiar with these are the basic concepts, okay? Because uh, here you are learning end-to-end -end projects. So I'm expecting you know these are the thing at least, okay? Now let's activate our environment. So this is the command they have give, already given. So conda activate our text s, okay? Yeah. Now I'll clear my terminal. Now first of all, what I need to do, I need to write my requirement.txt. So the first requirement I need, I need transformers. Okay, transformer means I will be using Hugging Face, this Hugging Face API. If you search on Google Hugging Face. Okay, this is the website of Hugging Face. So if you want to use Hugging Face API, so you need to use transformer library. Okay, so they have given the installation guideline. You can check it here. Okay, but let me show you quickly. So transformers I need, then I need uh, transformers with uh, sentence pieces, okay? So I'll just write sentence, sentence pieces, okay? Then I also need data set. Then uh, I also need spray blue. So why I need a spray blue? Because this is one uh, like uh, evolution metrics, okay? Uh, if you are doing text summarization, so for text summarization, actually there is a matrix we use called row matrix, okay? And if you want to use row matrix, so you need this library called Scrabble, okay? So it is presented inside that only. Then I also need uh, row. Row is cool. Then I seven zeta so these are some uh you can say uh necessary library actually you need uh, to use transformer so i'm installing with that then i also need pandas nltk then i will also install tqdm pyml i need matplotlib then i also need torch Okay, 
So there actually one thing I want to tell uh, if you have GPU in your system. So what you can do, you can install this torch as GPU version. Okay, so to install torch as GPU version, just visit torch uh, PyTorch website. Okay, so here uh, you have the installation guidelines. So if you have your Windows, if you want to using pip, Python, make sure your CUDA which version you are using, and this is the command you need to execute. Okay, but here I will install as torch only because uh, uh, mostly you won't have GPU in your system. It's completely fine. So it will uh, install CPU version. So it can also work in your CPU. Okay, because here I my motto is to like show you the end-to-end -end, uh, pipeline, okay, end-to-end -end project implementation, okay. So whenever you will be creating your actual project implementation, so there actually will have your uh, GPU configuration machine, okay. So here, there actually pipeline will be same. Only you just to uh, install Torch as GPU version. That's it, okay. Now let's keep it as simple. So I'll install Torch. Uh, so then I also need notebook. Then I need some more library. So let me copy them. okay from my other uh screen okay so these are the libraries actually you needed okay at the last actually you need uh, something called a uh, hyphen e dot sp uh, uh, space dot okay so what does it mean uh hyphen e uh space dot so it will actually install your setup.py this setup.py file you can see so here actually we'll be writing our logic uh, of our this uh, local package installation code okay so now requirement creation is done now i'll open this setup.py So the first thing actually to write the setup.py uh, you need to initialize your uh, readme so you need to read your readme file okay uh, because why you need to write uh, read your readme file let me show you let's say you want to publish this uh, uh, like you can say project as a package okay pypy package at that time you can also publish it okay in pypy website so let me show you i had published one package called image seeker image seeker okay so let me show you PyPy. So this package actually I created and I published it on PyPy. Okay. So now if you open my package here, so here actually you can see the description, right, of my package. Like this is my name. Okay. Uh, I'm the author. Then my email, my GitHub. Then about the package. Okay. Now how to use it. All the guideline I have given here. Okay. So this kinds of render, if you want to do, then at that time you want to read this readme.md because everything you will be mentioning inside readme.md. Okay. So these are the description you will be mentioning so this thing actually it will publish here even if you see this is my project uh link if you open the github so this is the uh like pipi package uh you can see github official github okay so if you don't know what is image seeker image seeker is a image classification automatic library so here actually you don't need to uh, like do lots of things so only what you need to do see if you want to do image classification using keras so you need to write tons of code like that okay but if you're using my library so just install my library and in the terminal service write image seeker it will launch one ui so okay so here just mention your data path okay and mention the model configuration epoch size and just click on start training so it will start the training and after that actually you can directly do the prediction it will give you the give you the prediction okay so it's like kinds of plug and play kinds of thing package i have implemented okay and uh, uh, this was like uh, i have implemented long back whenever i was learning this uh, pipi package implementation okay that time i created this one and i published it on pipi okay so this kinds of package if you want to implement so this setup.py actually you need to follow okay now actually i won't be publishing it this is as pypy package but i will be using as my local package okay that's why although, although everything will remain same but uh, i won't be publishing this thing okay now here first of all you need to specify the version okay so initial my package version would be 000, zero okay and you need to give your repo name so let me copy our repo name so this is my repo uh this is my repo name okay i'll copy the name i'll replace it here okay author name author username you, you can give your username okay of, of your github username for me it's nt puppy okay then source repository uh source repository means uh uh if you go inside src okay inside that i have created my uh, project name okay so this is my so source repository okay text summarizer now you can give your author email okay so for me i have given my email now this is the final code for the local package setup so basically it will look for 
this uh, constructor file every folder and it will install it okay as my local package that's it so let me save it and uh, let's give nlp app okay nlp app okay so yeah i think it's done now let's do the installation of our requirements okay so to install this this one make sure you have added this hyphen e space dot okay otherwise it won't be installing now i think i've done now let's me i'll just write pip install hyphen r requirement.txt okay so it may take some time initially if you don't have torch installed in your system okay could not satisfy the version okay i think transformer spelling is not correct let me see okay it should be transformer sorry spelling was not correct now let me install it again yeah so first of all uh, it may take some time initially okay let's wait uh, once it is done i will come back So guys, again, I got one error uh, from this gray blue. I think spelling is not correct. Let me see. Yeah, guys, uh, spelling was not correct. Now, again, let me install it. Uh, see, guys, installation is going on. So let's wait. I uh, will come back one once it is done. Okay. So guys as you can see requirements installation is done uh, there is no error that means you have installed it successfully okay now what i will do i will uh, commit the changes so we have added the requirements so let me open my terminal let me clear it i will just write git add okay git commit hyphen m uh, requirements added give a proper message name so that actually later on if you want to take that commit okay you can get it okay and uh, installation installation done i'll just write it push origin main okay it's done now if i Go to my GitHub. Uh, see, guys, uh, it's done. Now let me open the requirements and see. All changes are done. Okay. So, yeah, we have completed the project setup itself as well. Uh, guys, we have completed the installation and project setup. Uh, now, uh, what uh, we are going to do, we are going to write our uh, logging exception and utils model. Okay. Because this three thing is uh, important uh, before implementing the actual components. Okay, so these are the thing actually we will be uh, writing in our uh, with our entire components. Okay, so first of all, what I will do, uh, I think you remember in the SRC folder inside text summarization, I have created one uh, folder called logging. Okay, so I'll open the logging and inside that I have one constructor file called underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot pi. Okay, so inside that actually I'll be uh, mentioning my custom log. Okay, so I'll open this file. Uh, let me uh, close these are the thing because these are the thing is not required yeah so i already prepared one uh, custom log okay so you can use this custom log in your every project okay so i have already prepared so let me show you so first of all actually you need some of the libraries to implement a custom log so i have implemented this custom log by using this uh, inbuilt uh, logging uh, module okay uh, have inside python so on top of this logging actually you can customize okay uh, whatever uh, like custom log you want to implement then you know, first of all you need to uh, define one logging string i think you remember inside our as uh, like uh, template.py also we have defined one logging string okay so now actually this logging string is a little bit different as you can see first of all i am taking ascii time okay so whenever uh, you will uh, log the information so uh, it will create one file called uh, logging running log uh, uh, dot log okay inside that first of all it will save the timestamp the timestamp you run your code then it will give the label name okay like uh, what kinds of log actually uh, you are trying to log basically we'll be doing the information logging then module like which module actually you are running let's say i i, I run this main.py okay so it, this is the root module so it will have the root here okay so it will basically detect like from where actually you are running the file 
then after that it will give you the message okay log message you want to do okay so to create the folder uh, this code actually you need first of all i will create one directory called logs inside directory i will be creating one file called running underscore log dot log okay uh, then actually what it will do it will create the directory okay this uh, log directory now uh, i need to mention the log so this is the logic actually so basically see this is the information log it will detect okay this is the log format i am mentioning my string and handler here i am defining two things like file handler okay and stream handler so basically uh, it will log uh, in two place one is like our file definitely it will create one file okay then inside that it will log and it will sh also show inside our terminal okay on top of the terminal uh, let's say you are running the code okay in the terminal itself it will also show the log okay so for this actually i have added this stream handler okay and uh, this is my get logger and you can give any name here okay so this is my custom log so let me uh, execute it and show you like how it will work so for this actually what i will do uh, i will open my main.py okay so first of all let's import my own logging okay so if you want to import the logging so just write from uh, text summarization uh, because text summarizer uh, text summarizer actually uh, is the local package okay right now because we have already installed it okay if you see uh, text summarizer we have already installed as my local package okay so that's why i'm importing text summarizer uh, I, I haven't written src because text summarizer has been my local package okay because i have mentioned the name there okay text summarizer then inside i have logging so i'll just write logging okay uh, import logging i think it should be logger uh, yeah it should be logger now if i just write right now logger uh, dot info okay logger dot info let's give any message here so welcome to our custom log okay now let me execute this file and you will see it will create one log file inside that it will do the logging so i'll just write python main.py okay it's telling model name not found text summarizer it was text summarizer right okay it's uh giving me the error because i haven't activated my environment okay so let me activate so i'll just write conda activate text it was text x right yeah text s now just let me write python main.py now guys see it has run see it is also logging here see you can see the log first of all it will uh, store your timestamp so this is the timestamp you run and this is the information log you have run from the main main file okay and welcome to our custom log okay see the same format we have written here it's giving the log like that only okay as you can see ascii time level and module masses okay now if you if i show you uh left hand side it has created one folder for logs inside that it has again created one file called running logs okay now if i open this one you will see the same thing okay now we have successfully created our custom logs okay now here uh, let me change my uh python environment because it is selected as base uh, i have created uh, this new environment i will select it so first of all let me refresh yeah text s okay this is my environment yeah so yes we have completed our login now what i will do hmm. let's uh, implement our uh, utils okay and here actually i'm not going to uh, like write this custom exception separately because we'll be using something called a box exception okay uh, so instead of writing our custom exception we can use the box exception okay uh, it is pretty much good so i'll uh, write this exception inside my utils okay uh, utils module so let me open the utils uh, this is the utils folder inside that i have common.py okay so first of all let me tell you what is utils okay so utils means let's say you are using some uh, python function okay frequently in your code let's say you have created a one function called read yaml so this function is responsible for uh, reading your yaml file okay so now what you are doing you are writing all the components and inside that you are using this read yaml uh, method okay like frequently every time so instead of just writing that read yaml uh, function okay in that components again and again so what you can do you can 
write it inside this utils that means inside common.py okay and whenever you need it you just import it from here okay so what you are doing actually you are creating a module here okay you are creating a module you are creating a function and whenever you need it you are importing from that file okay and you are using in other file okay so that's why we call it utility function so those function you will be using frequently in your code you can call it as utility function and instead of writing them frequently in your code you just try to mention them inside common.py okay or inside your utils folder okay so that's why this utils is very much important so here i'm going to mention some of the function those function actually i'll be using inside my code frequently okay so first of all what i will do so first of all let me import uh, some of the libraries okay so these are the libraries that are needed so here basically if you see i'm importing my box error as i already told you i will be using box error box exception uh, exception okay then i also need yaml module because i here actually i'm going to use yaml file as you can see inside config i have created yaml file i'll be reading this yaml file okay then i have also this parameter yaml then i'm importing my custom logger okay uh, this logger i have created here i'm also importing because i also need to uh, log each and every information then here two things i'm using called ensure annotation and config box okay these two th two things i will explain okay so these two things actually i will ex explain don't worry okay what is uh, this and why you will be using this one okay then i think you are already familiar with the path and i will be also using typing module okay so these are the module actually i need so the first function actually i'm going to use throughout my entire code which is nothing but read yaml okay so this method is actually responsible for reading any yaml file and it will return all the con content okay present inside yaml file okay so this is thing i uh, this thing i have already prepared so this thing actually you can use as it is okay and here if you see i have given one decorator called ensure annotation okay why i have given the in, uh, ensure annotation decorator okay i'll explain this thing later on just a wait now uh, i need another uh, method called create directories okay because every components will be creating some directories called, let's say i will be creating a directory is called artifacts inside that i will be creating a directory called data ingestion okay inside that i will be ingesting my data that's how i need to create a directories okay so this method is responsible for creating the directories okay now i will create another method called get size okay so it will return me the size okay size of a file okay so this thing i need okay whenever i need i will tell you okay this thing now uh, these are the utility function actually i need now let me explain what is this uh, config box uh, as you can see here i am returning my yaml file as config box output okay uh, config box type why i am returning as config box type okay let me explain right now so for this actually what i will do i will uh, open my resource folder here i have created one trials.ipnb file okay so let me open this ipnb file so first of all here i need to select my kernel so i will click here i will select python environment so the environment i have created called uh, text s let me find it here text x i think it is somewhere there if it's not there just try to refresh uh, yeah text s is there okay i will select this environment okay now first of all uh, uh, what i will do i will take one uh, dictionary okay for d and here i will mention some key pair okay so i'll just write key and uh, here i'll mention the value as well okay then i will uh, take another key pair i'll name it as key one and value one okay yeah so let me execute yeah now if i tell you i need this value okay so then how you will access this value okay so for this actually we usually perform this kinds of operation if i write key okay it will return me the value see it is returning the value okay but let's say i'm telling you i want to access this key as like that instead of giving as a list okay i want to access like that okay if i write key now if i press enter see it will give me error like date object has no attribute key but although i can access like that but i want to access like that because this is more convenience okay i don't need to write like that okay so if you want to access your uh, like uh, values like that okay using the keys so what you can do you can use this config box okay so let's let me import config box so i'll just write from box uh, import config box config box okay now let me execute okay now what i will do uh, i will uh, copy the same dictionary okay and here 
I will create another dictionary uh, with config box objects. So I'll just write D2. Now, instead of like creating as a dictionary, what I will do, I will pass this thing inside config box. Okay. Config box. Inside that, actually, I will provide my dictionary. Okay. Now, let me execute. Now, if I mean D2. Okay. Now, if you see, this is not a dictionary. Okay. This is a config box type. Okay. Now, if I want to access this value, now I will just write D2 dot key okay now if i write this thing now see i can access the value like that okay but initially it was not allowing me to access my value like that okay so this is the convenience of config box so that whenever i am reading an yaml file inside whatever contents actually i want to access okay instead of just putting in the list okay what i can do i just i will just call by the keys only okay and it will return me the values okay so this is all about config box now let me discuss this ensure annotation okay why i have given this ensure annotation on top of every function okay so to explain this one first of all let me write one function here so i'll just uh, write one function called get product okay let let me define a simple function get product okay so it will take two uh, values one is x so it should be integer type okay i'm also defining the type okay of the value we want to pass and y uh, it should be also integer okay and the return type of this function should be also integer okay because two integer you are passing x y uh, these are integer and your uh, return type should be also integer okay now i'll just return x multiply by y okay so this is my simple function okay so it will give me the product okay now if i just write get uh, if i call my function and if i pass any value here so x is equal to 2 and uh, y is equal to let's say i'm giving 4 okay now if i hit enter see it is giving uh to multiply by 4 which is nothing but 8 okay it's working perfectly now let's say if i give any string value here okay instead of 4 i'll give this 4 as a string okay now if i execute this thing see it is still working and it's giving 44 okay but although here if you see i have mentioned my uh valuable type should be integer okay that that should not be string but still it is working it's still it is taking a string like data type okay so let's say you have implemented one bigger code and you have done these kinds of mistake okay and it is giving unexpected output at the time you'll confuse like what you have done okay if you're not handling these kinds of issue okay now to handle this kinds of issue if you want if you want to get alert okay like although you have given integer type data type but you are passing string data type it's still working and if you want to get like uh, alert okay from this so you can use ensure annotation something called ensure annotation okay so now let me import ensure annotation so i'll just write from ensure uh import ensure annotation okay this uh class i'll be importing okay now what i will do i will copy the same uh function okay only the change i will do i will just write this decorator on top of my function okay ensure annotation okay that's it now let me execute now what i will do i will copy the same thing as i did now see if i run it it will work fine because this two variable i have given as an integer type okay now let me run this thing now let me show you one thing now see now i am giving one string now if i execute okay so now see it's showing error arguments why of type 2 does not match annotation type see now it is giving me the error because here you have mentioned integer but you are trying to pass string here okay how it will work so it's a better practice whenever you are trying to mention the data type okay you just pa like pass this ensure annotation so that whenever you are giving some wrong variable also okay it will give you the alert okay here if you see i have mentioned everywhere as my data type okay every function i have mentioned my data type so that's why i'm using ensure annotation okay so this is a new library i got and i thought like let's integrate with our project also okay so it will give you uh, the better practice okay writing your code so you won't be getting any bugs okay so i hope you got it like what is a uh, box uh this config box and enter ensure annotation okay this thing should be pretty much clear in your mind okay so guys uh we have completed this uh, uh logging exception and this uh thing uh, if you see here i'm handling my exception so let me show you so here actually i'm using my box exception okay so you don't need to create exception separately okay i can use this exception okay as it is so guys we have completed our utils exception and this logging okay uh these are the thing now actually uh what i can do uh 
first of all i will show you the notebook uh, uh you can say experiment okay of this entire project like text summarization how we can perform in google collab okay and the same thing actually will be converting uh, in our actual end-to-end -end modular coding okay uh so guys now actually uh before implementing our actual components okay as a modular coding uh first of all let's uh try everything uh on this uh, collab notebook okay let's train our model on collab collab notebook let's uh do the prediction then once everything is working okay once uh you are able to understand okay then uh we'll try to convert everything okay uh in our modular coding format so first of all uh what i will do uh, i already prepared one collab notebook uh so this is the collab notebook of, uh, of my text summarization okay so first of all let's connect the notebook okay so i'll just uh connect it make sure you have selected runtime as gpu so here if you uh, click on change the runtime okay it is already selected gpu for me yeah so it's done now what i will do i will quickly uh, execute all the cell and if you are using hugging face uh, api so it's like very easy to use okay so it should be like pretty much uh, easy to understand okay so i got tesla t4 cpu because here i'm using pre collab okay now first of all i need to do the installation of my transformers so that means uh if you want to use hugging base then you need to install transformers okay and data set uh, then spray blue row score okay these are the thing actually you need to make the setup so let's run one by one so it may take some time let's wait Uh, so guys the installation is done now let's uh, uh, run this cell also then uh, once you have uh, installed this thing you will need to restart the runtime so just click on runtime and there is a restart runtime option is there just do it okay then it will again reconnect now let me execute these are the import i think it should work perfectly now if installation is uh, done successfully okay it's done now here what i'm doing uh, actually i'm just setting up my device uh, so if i print a device so let me run it separately uh, got it so it should give me CUDA because I got GPU here yeah it is giving CUDA if your GPU is not available it will set CPU okay uh, in our local we will be doing in CPU but here actually I am so showing you in GPU okay if you want to train it uh, in GPU so you can run run it okay here uh, because see mostly we uh, do this kinds of notebook uh, project okay but uh, I'm showing like how we can convert this notebook project to the end to end uh, pipeline. Okay. So this thing, uh, but whenever you will be do, uh, like uh, building this kinds of pipeline, okay, of your actual project at the time, uh, you will have the GPU, okay, GPU machine. Okay. Otherwise, you can bring the project to the cloud also. Okay. It's completely fine. Now, this is the model actually we'll be using called Google uh, Pegasus CNN Daily Mail. Okay. So if I search about the model, so this is the transformer based model actually. We call it Google Pegasus from Hugging Face. Okay. So this is the model. So if you want to read about the model, just open the documentation of the model. So everything you will uh, see, see this uh, hugging face is like beautiful. They have given lots of information. Okay. See, everything is there. If you have time, just try to go through the like uh, reading. Okay. And see also example they have also provided. Okay. What is Pegasus? Like how, so how much data actually they have used to train this model? Okay. If you want to fine tune it, so how to do it, everything they have mentioned in their documentation. So try to go, go through it. Okay. So see, these are the data actually they have down, uh, like used, okay, to train this uh, uh, Pegasus model. Okay. So everything they have there, even you can test it also this model. Okay. They have uh, hosted one API. See if I uh, uh, like pass this text, okay, it will give me the summarization and this, uh, model is for only summarization task okay they have mentioned so th that's actually you can read about the model any model just starts here okay it will give you all the information of the model okay so i'll come here so this is the google pegasus model first of all i will load my tokenizer so uh here i have importing my tokenizer okay and inside that actually i'm passing the uh like model okay so basically in hugging face what do we do actually whenever we try to use any uh, tra transformer based model 
the model actually we use the same model we use for the tokenization also okay so that's why i'm passing the same name inside my tokenizer also same name inside my model also okay then i'm loading uh, everything in my gpu okay now uh, let me uh, execute see guys uh, this model is being downloaded okay okay it's done now i need to download and unzip the data so the data actually i'm using called uh, samsung data okay so if i search about samsung data samsung data uh, so this is the data actually so this is for uh this is one dialogue actually if you see this is one dialogue and with the summary okay uh, it has also the summary so this data set actually i'm going to use so you can read about the data okay like uh uh, how many data points are there everything they have see uh, this is the training data this is the validation data this is the testing data okay and uh, it has uh, these are the columns okay everything they have mentioned okay so this data actually uh, is available in my github so what i'm doing so let me show you uh, this is the link of the data okay this is the link if you just go to this link so it will start downloading the data so either you can keep uh, this data in your github uh, after downloading okay otherwise you can also keep it in any database okay uh, you can read about it but in this case actually uh, text data is like a little bit less uh, uh, because see test data size is uh, like less so uh, that's why i have uploaded this thing in my uh, github okay and i have uh, zipped them my data and uh, uploaded in my github and uh, here actually i am downloading uh, using the url okay then i am unzipping the data now let me download and show you how your data will look like yeah so it is downloaded now if i refresh here so see guys this is the data and uh, these are the csv file you can see and uh, inside this folder actually it is uh, uh, mm -hmm. like binary format so it is uh, arranged as binary format dot arrow format okay uh, this is the hugging face format okay uh, you can also convert it uh, csv mm -hmm. to uh, hugging face format so uh, you can search on google okay so you will get this script okay how to do it okay and if you open the csv file how it will look like so let me open up with a notepad see guys these are three column you have with that actually you have dialogue and you have the summary okay so that's how your data will look like so let me close it yeah so this is the data now if i load the data because it is present inside my dicks so that's why i'm loading my data okay so this is the data dick format now see this is the record you have here id dialogue summary and this is the record okay now let's uh, uh, print some of the data and let me show you how it will look like. See, this is the data split, this is the features, okay, you have, and this is the dialogue, okay? And based on our dialogue, this is the summary, okay? So that's actually you can build a summarization, okay? Now, actually, what I need to do, I need to convert my, uh, now actually what I need to do, I need to convert my uh, example to features because uh, I can't pass this text data to my model, okay? So for this, actually, I need to generate this input IDs, attention mask and levels, okay? If you know transformer a little bit, okay? So I think you are already familiar with these are the thing, okay? So this uh, function actually uh, will help me to do it, okay? It will uh, convert input IDs, attention mask and levels, okay? Here, if you see, I'm using tokenizer and all, okay? So now let's uh, do it. Okay, now I will apply this thing on my data. I'll map it. See, it is applying everything. Okay, it's done. Now, let me show you the data. See guys, initially it has three columns. Now it has six column, okay? Because uh, three more column we have increased input ID, attention mask and levels, okay? Now we can start the training. So first of all, I will uh, initialize my data uh, later. Okay, I it is responsible for creating the batches. Okay, suppose whenever you will be passing the data, instead of taking all the data together, it will take as a batches. Okay, now I need to set some arguments, training arguments. So these are the training arguments you can set. So number of blocks I have set as of now one because uh, it will take time. Okay, uh, so then these are the like you can hyper parameter you can set, but you just keep it as default. Okay, now uh, this is the training. Here I am initializing the training. So here one thing I am taking test data for my training because if you see my uh, train data size, uh, it's like huge, okay, uh, around 14,000 uh, here, I think somewhere I think I showed, 
uh, 14,000. Okay, so if I take the, uh, that much of data, it will take time. So I'm taking 819 for training. Okay, that's why I have mentioned train here. Here, if you see, I have mentioned a uh, test here. Okay, but whenever you are training your model, just try to mention test. Okay, uh, sorry, train. So it will pick up the training data. Train. Okay, but for me, I will mention test here because I want to quickly show you how to train. Okay, now let me run it. Now, uh, if you run this code, so it will start the training. See guys, training has started. So it may take some time. Let's wait, okay? I'll come back once it is done. Uh, so guys, as you can see, training is done. Now let's do the evaluation. So uh this is the code for evaluation actually uh so this will basically generate your batch size chunks and uh it will actually uh, uh calculate the matrix on your test js okay so then let's uh run it so basically here we'll be uh calculating this row one row two row l and uh, row l sum okay this uh four matrix actually will be calculating for uh text summarization okay so this is the text summarization matrix so now let's load our matrix called row matrix okay now Finally, I will call this calculate matrix on test data and here I'm providing my test data. Okay. And here, instead of taking all the test data, I'm taking around 10 data points because uh, if I am doing it on uh, in my entire data set, okay, it will take a lot of time okay, to calculate the matrix. So just for quick, uh, quickly like show you, okay, I, I have taken just uh, 10 data point, but if you're doing it, just try to remove this line. Okay. Uh, so that actually it will uh, test on top of the old data set. Okay. Now let's execute. And you can see this is a column text. So this is my input and this is the output. Okay. Like this, this is my target, uh, like summary. Okay. So now, uh, this is your final matrix. So this is row one, row two, uh, row L and, uh, row, uh, L sum. Okay. So this is the matrix. So this matrix, uh, like, uh, accuracy is not good because, uh, as we already trained our data set on test data and, uh, it's not good. Okay. So if you're training on your trained data set, okay. And if you're increasing the number of epochs, okay, then you will have a good model. Okay. But just for the demo, actually, I showed you like that only. Okay. But if you're doing it, just do it in actual way. Now you can save the model also. So this is the code for saving the model. So it will save using that name. It will create a folder called Pegasus Samsung model inside that it will save the model. Okay. So guys, it has saved my model. So this is the folder inside that you can see this is the model. Okay. A PyTorch bin JSON and config.json is the model. Now you can also save the tokenizer because these two things you need to save because uh, whenever you will do in the prediction, okay, I need these two things. Okay. It will also save the tokenizer if you refresh here. So here you can see the tokenizer also. Okay. So we'll be using this thing. Now you can load the tokenizer as well. So this is the uh, function from pretend okay it will load a tokenizer now this is the prediction code so here if you see i'm uh, setting some so here if you see uh, i'm setting some arguments okay like uh, length penalty then num beams okay then max length okay so this two thing you just keep it as default and this thing actually you can change uh, i think i showed you one parameter whenever i was searching this text summarization text summarization online okay this tool let me open I think you saw there is a uh, like uh, progress bar was there. Okay. So if you just uh, like increase it, so it will generate like more text. If you just decrease it, it will generate less text. Okay. So if you, if you want to control this uh, parameter, so you can set this parameter. Okay. So I have, so here actually I have set max length as 128. Okay. You can change this one. So it will generate your uh, like text with respect to that only. Okay. Now here I'm taking some test data. Okay. Then I'm calling the pipeline. Okay. From my hugging face. Okay, so if you see there, I was uh, importing pipeline somewhere whenever I was doing the importing. Uh, yeah, this is the pipeline I'm importing. So inside pipeline, you just need to mention the task you want to do. So here I want to perform summarization. Okay, then you just pass your model. So this is the trained model I have. I'm passing. Okay, this is my custom model, and I'm passing also my tokenizer. Okay, and then after that, this is the actually your actual dialogue and reference. Okay, reference text. And this is my prediction from my model. Okay, so here if you see, I'm giving the sample text here and also providing the arguments. Okay, then I'm uh, extracting the summary length. Okay, now see, this is your actual dialogue. This is the actual summary and this is your model output. Okay, now if you see, this is pretty much good. 
okay but you won't be getting actual output because i turned on the less uh one epochs okay and i turned on test data set that's why this model is not good okay but if you're doing it just do it in actual way okay so i hope you got it like how to uh like uh train this entire uh, text summarization okay on the notebook and uh, now everything will be converting as our modular coding will be building and trend pipeline okay so now guys uh what i will do i will just download this uh, notebook as uh, ip when the file and i will keep it inside my research folder okay just for your reference so that actually you can also get this one so i'll download it and uh, i will move it uh i'll move this thing inside my research folder okay so let me do it so guys i have already uh, moved it in my research folder as you can see text summarization uh so guys uh, we have uh already seen like uh how we can uh uh, do the entire project okay and we have done this notebook experiment so actually now uh, what i will show you uh first of all let me show you the project overflow actually will be following because uh, now uh you have one question in your mind uh like uh there are like lots of file but which file i need to change first okay and uh, uh how how to follow the actually project workflow okay like uh step by step workflow so this is very much important so whenever you are trying to follow this kinds of modular coding approach so you need to maintain the file okay so like which file you need to uh write first okay then uh how to integrate together so these are the thing actually you need to know okay so uh let me uh, discuss uh so i will write it down inside my uh, readme.md file so that actually we can get the reference from here only okay so first of all uh let me change the name of the project so it is end-to-end -end, uh okay it is end to end text summarization project so first of all let me write the workflows okay so the first file actually we need to update always which is nothing but uh update uh config.yaml okay config dot yaml file so as you can see here inside config folder i have config dot yaml file okay so the first uh, thing actually we need to always update which is nothing but config dot yaml okay and what are the updates actually you need to do i will tell you okay whenever i will start uh this uh uh components creation okay uh as of now just try to get the workflows okay what are the things actually you need to do then the second file uh you need to update which is nothing but your params dot yaml okay params dot yaml file as you can see i have another uh, yaml file which is nothing but params dot yaml file okay then uh third file you need to update which is nothing but your mm, let me write the update here also yeah so the third file you need to update uh which is nothing but your entity update entity so here you can see uh, i have entity inside my src okay entity we need to update then fourth uh, i need to update my configuration update uh, configuration manager okay uh, in src uh, config okay so as you can see inside src i have another uh, config okay config folder we have created inside that we have created one configuration.py okay so which is nothing but our config manager okay so configuration manager this configuration manager we need to update okay fourth then fifth we need to update uh components okay okay so as you can see i have components components nothing but our data ingestion data validation data transformation okay model trainer these are the thing now sixth file we need to update which is nothing but our pipeline okay so as you can see there is a pipeline folder we have okay so this pipeline we need to update and the seventh uh thing we need to update our main.py okay main.py that's it and uh the last one i need to update the app.py okay which we will update at the last very last okay uh after implementation of our project 
so yes guys this is the workflows of our uh, project okay entire project implementation will be following now actually you have the reference okay now anytime you can open this one and you can see like what are the changes you need to do okay which file you need to change first okay so that's why this uh, project workflow is important okay so this will give you the end-to-end -end, uh, idea okay uh, whenever you are trying to implement any project and if you want to learn end-to-end uh, -end implementation of any dl project okay like deep learning project or uh, any other project so you can visit my youtube channel so this is my youtube channel guys as you can see ds with Buppy. so you can come here so here actually i have created a lots of playlist okay so whenever i get time i just try to create this kinds of video so here actually i also created end-to-end -end deep learning project implementation let's say if you want to implement image classification project okay uh, and you, if you want to follow the end-to-end -end pipeline okay you can follow this one okay even i have uh like uh, uh some more project implementation here if you see okay so here i have like lots of playlists you can go through it okay uh, if you have liked my channel so you can also do the subscribe okay here uh, so that actually uh, in future i will upload more video on top of it okay so it will give you like uh, uh, so it will help you okay uh, to crack uh, your interviews okay uh, in future so yes guys uh, now we can start uh, implementing our data ingestion components very first okay because data ingestion components uh, we need to create very first uh, first of all we need to ingest the data then uh, actually uh, we can uh, uh, start our other components okay but uh, before that let me tell you one thing uh, here actually i'm uh, i have uploaded my data in my uh, github okay uh, you can also upload your data in your s3 bucket okay if you have uh, amazon account amazon web service account so you can upload your data in s3 bucket okay you can upload anywhere and you can download the data okay but in this case i have uploaded uh, uh, in my uh, github account okay because uh, see this data size is like very less so that's why uh, i can upload in my github okay uh, so that actually everybody uh, can uh, follow with me because someone you might not have the aws account okay so that's why uh, what i thought like let's uh, do it on my github okay uh, uh, i will bring my data from my github okay so that actually you can also do it simultaneously okay so uh, let me tell you like how you can uh, prepare your data see this is my data you can download from anywhere just write samsung data set download okay you will be able to download the data otherwise i will uh, give my data set okay as i already show uh, like showed you the data so just try to zip your data so here i'm using 7zip you can also use any other zip okay just try to zip your data okay so that's how uh, i will make a zip file okay now you can change the data name so in this case let's give sam some data okay sam some data now this data actually you need to upload in your github okay so now let so just try to open up your github uh, i will open any repository here okay so let's say i will open this repository because here i just try to keep all my all of my data okay i usually use okay so here just try to open up your data folder so you, you you just need to drag and drop that's it okay just try to drag and drop this data here okay now it is telling to commit see it's uploading this, this zip file okay so you can also upload this zip file and try to commit it so let, let let's wait okay it's uploading Okay, it's done. Now I will just click on commit. Okay, it's uploaded. So I think it was Samsung data, right? Uh, yeah, Samsung data. See, uh, this is my previous data. Okay, this data set I will be using, but this is uh, this is one I have just uploaded right now. So now what you need to do, just click on the data. Okay. Now here uh, you will see something called view raw. Okay. So here just right click and copy the link address. Okay. Just right click and copy the link address. And if you just uh, take a new tab and paste the link here see this is the link actually you will be using to download my data okay so this link just try to save it somewhere okay i need this link so what you can do you can either upload this data in your github either you can use my url okay i will provide in the uh, uh repository okay so the same url you can use also okay you don't need to upload that data but if you want you can also upload your data and get the link here okay so now uh, you can start uh, like implementing our data ingestion uh, components but before implementing the actual components okay first of all we will be doing the notebook experiment okay once my notebook is running okay i will convert this to in our modular coding okay so guys uh, let's start with our data ingestion uh, notebook experiment so for this actually what i will do i will create uh, one uh, jupyter notebook file inside my uh, research folder okay so just click on research and here let's create one uh, notebook file yeah so i will name this file as uh, 01 
because this is going to be my first uh, first stage okay first component so data underscore injection uh, dot ip when we okay that's it now let me close these are the thing yeah so first of all so first of all uh, let's import OS. so i'll just write import OS. okay yeah i need to select the kernel so i will select my environment which is nothing but text text okay yeah so now what i need to do i need to change the directory uh, to my root folder because now if i show you if i just write uh, pwd uh, if i just write percentage pwd okay this is the command like project working directory now you can see it is i'm inside resource folder okay but everything i want to perform from my root folder okay so that's why i need to go back okay so how we can go back i'll just write os dot chdir okay that means change directory okay i want to just go back uh one folder okay uh, and i want to uh, be inside text summarization project which is nothing but my root root uh like you can say project folder okay now if i execute this thing okay now this folder has been changed now if i again run pwd now you can see i'm inside text summarization project okay so the first thing what i need to do i need to up, update my config.yaml okay so let's update by config.yaml okay so i'll open my config config.yaml okay so yeah so first of all i will define my artifacts folder here okay so artifacts is equal to uh, artifacts root is equal to artifacts so what it will do it will create one folder here called artifacts okay and all the generation okay like from my uh like components everything will save inside uh, my artifacts folder okay so that's why this artifacts is required okay now what i need to do first of all i need to create my data ingestion related configuration okay so what is configuration actually let's say if you want to if you need some path okay if you need some path if you need some url okay so these are the thing actually you can store okay in this config.yml and from here actually you can read it and use it later on okay so let me show you i have already prepared my data ingestion config so this is the data ingestion config so here what i have defined this is my data ingestion okay this is my root uh, like name and inside that actually i'm again defined some of the subfolder as you can see okay so first of all i'm defining one path artifacts slash data ingestion so what it will do it will create inside a uh, artifacts called data ingestion and inside that actually it will download the data so this is the url i have mentioned and i i already told you how you can save the url okay uh, so just get your url or you can use my url also it will work fine okay then local data like file so here actually it will download the data okay inside data ingestion it will download this data as data.zip okay then whenever you will be unzipping the data okay so it will store inside again the data ingestion okay so that's how you can mention the path so why i have defined like that let's say in future you want to add some more path okay and you want to change the directory name okay so what you can do just change the name here it will reflect in your whole code okay so you don't need to open the file manually and need to change change it there okay so instead of that actually you can open your config.yml file and you can make the changes here okay and it will reflect inside your all code okay so that is the convenience to create this configuration file okay i hope you got it now what i will do i will quickly save it so this is my data ingestion related configuration and this is my data path okay now i will open my uh, data ingestion notebook now let's see uh, the second step i need to perform which is nothing but i need to update my params.yml but in this case i don't have any parameter okay parameter i will be using whenever i will have my uh whenever i will be writing my model trainer configuration okay at that time i, I need this params.yml okay but at, as of now i don't need it okay so i won't be creating this thing now I will skip this thing and i will see the third step which is nothing but i need to update the entity okay so now let's open my uh, uh ip1b file that means notebook file okay now let's create the entity so what is entity entity is nothing but return type of a function okay so how we can de define the return type of a function okay so for this actually you can use something called data class okay so i'll import the data class so data classes uh import data class i think it's a data class okay data class now i also need path so i'll just write path lib okay import i need path okay now first of all you need to define one decorator called uh, data class okay inside that you need to write one parameter called frozen is equal to true okay and inside that you, you can define one class i will name this class as my data ingestion data
injection config okay so this is the class name so this is not a like you can say python actual class okay so it is a data class okay so here actually you can mention uh, your variable okay so so what are the variable i have taken i think you remember first of all i have taken root directory okay so root directory what is the so what is the type of this root directory so it is path okay so i will define path here so this is a path type okay so that's why i have mentioned path now the second thing i have which is nothing but source url so what is the type of the source url it is string okay so i'll just write str okay now the third thing i have local data file so this is again one i think uh, path okay so i'll just define path and the last one i have which is nothing but anzig directory again it, it is a path type okay yeah so this is the return type of a function okay so which function actually return this thing uh whenever i will be creating my configuration manager at that time this should be very much clear okay as of now just consider this is your entity okay entity means this is the return type of a function okay so let's say whenever i will be creating my configuration like let's say data ingestion configuration at that time my data ingestion configuration okay data ingestion class will return these are the variable okay and i will take this variable and i will use it okay whenever i, I need it so if i call just root directory it will automatically return me this path okay if i call source url it will automatically return this path okay so that's how i can access all the value presented inside the variable okay now this thing is done now let me execute yeah now again let's go to readme.md and see the fourth step i need to perform which is nothing but i need to update my configuration manager okay inside src config but here i'm not doing inside my uh this folder because i am doing the notebook experiment so everything i'll be writing on the notebook okay so the first thing actually i need to do i need to import all the constants so let me import so from text summarization text summarizer okay dot constant i haven't created any constant yet let me create it also import uh i want to import everything that's why i have given a star okay uh, first of all let me create the constant so i'll open this constant folder inside that i have one constructor file i'll open it okay so here what is the constant actually constant is nothing but here i only want to return my uh, this config okay yaml and my panels.yaml because because i want to read it okay to read this okay this uh, like file i need the path okay so instead of just hard code this path what i what i can do i can keep this path okay in, inside the constant because see this path won't be changing okay this is a constant type okay so one time i will set the path and i will use it okay like every time whenever i'll be using this thing okay so i have already prepared so this is the constant actually so basically this is your config file path so here it will return this path okay as you can see i'm passing this thing inside the path class so it will return me the path so config slash config dot yaml okay and why i'm giving path because th this is a windows path okay it will return and params path as well see params doesn't have any folder so that's why i have given the path raw path okay so this two path actually i need and i will read this file okay and i will return all the content inside it okay so i'll now let me close it it's done now i can access my constant okay whatever constant i have now i all i now i also need uh two more thing i'll just import it from text summarizer uh from utils okay dot common i want to import read yaml okay and i also need create directories okay so these two thing i have already created as you can see inside my common read yaml and my uh create directories okay so these two things i'll be importing from my uh utils now let me execute okay so now i will create one class called configuration manager manager okay so inside that i will define one uh constructor so let me just uh yeah so this is the constructor as you can see so here if you see it has some class variable so here i am taking my config file path 
and I'm taking the config file path from this constraint. Okay, because I have imported everything here. So whatever constraint I have, I can access everything. So if I just write, uh, con press control and right click on the variable, see if I press control, so you can actually redirect here. Now right click on it, so it will redirect here. Okay, now I have imported my config file path and my params file path. Okay, both I have imported here. Okay, now if you see, I'm passing this path inside my read YAML. That means this method. Okay, and it will like read this yaml file okay it will read this yaml file and i can access all this variable okay inside that so that's why i'm reading and i'm also reading my params.yaml okay but if you open the your params.yaml uh, here it doesn't contain anything okay it is completely empty but if you want to execute the code at a time it will throw error it will tell your uh, params yaml file is completely empty okay that's why you will get one error okay to overcome this error here just add some dummy key value path okay uh, Later on, I will uh, delete it and I will add my params.yml. But to run this project, okay, you need to add some dummy key uh, key value here, okay? So I'll just write key and value, okay? Just a dummy value I have given here, key value, yeah. So key value is fine, I think. Uh, yeah, key value is fine. Now I'll save it. Now I actually it won't be throwing any error, okay? Now I'll close it. Yeah. Now it will return me all the content inside. Okay. So first thing what I need to, I need to create one folder. Okay. Which is nothing but artifacts root. Okay. So I'll create artifacts root folder here. So sorry. Yeah. So here, if you see, I'm calling my create directories, uh, function. Okay. And here inside that I'm passing my config artifacts, artifacts root. Okay. What is artifact roots? If I open my config YAML, this is the artifacts root. Okay. So, and inside that I have history and this artifacts root okay what is the value called artifacts okay so this is the folder name so this folder would be automatically created okay if you see i'm calling my config dot artifacts root okay as i already showed you uh inside my trials dot ip when be because this thing i have uh, like written as my config box type so instead of just calling like that inside uh okay inside this so instead of calling like that okay i'm calling like that only like i'm just giving the variable name and i'm just passing dot and i'm just calling by the key okay so here if you see i'm calling like that only so config dot artifacts root okay because this is the config box type output okay uh, that's why i uh, i use this config box okay so this is more convenient now i have created the ar artifacts root that means root folder okay now what i need to do uh, i will prepare one uh, method here called get data ingestion config so this is the method called dead data ingestion config. So this is the return type of this method, as you can see, and the return type we have already prepared here. Data ingestion config, as you can see, data ingestion config. If you just right click and press, uh, okay, here let me show you. If you just right, uh, if you just press Control and right click on top of it, it will redirect here. Okay, so this is the return type. These are the variable it will return, as you can see here. These are the variable it is returning: root directory, source URL, local file path. Okay unzip data and this thing i'm returning okay so this is the return type so that so that's why we have created our custom return type of any function okay using this data class and we call it entity okay and this is my config manager uh, class and inside that i have my data ingestion related configuration okay so now i can easily call my data ingestion related configuration and i, I can access all the thing okay present inside my config.yaml file okay now see i don't have to change anything here okay so what i will do i'll just change it here and it will reflect it here okay so that is the convenience i'm following okay now as you can see here first of all i am creating one root directory so what is root directory config.root directory now if i come here so config.root directory means i'm creating this data ingestion okay this data ingestion folder inside artifacts okay and then everything i'm performing my source url lo local data file path unzip file path okay i can download my data so that's why previously i'm creating my directory okay now my config manager is ready now let me run it yeah now if i open my readme so config manager is i have completed now i need to update my components okay now let's let's create the components here okay so to create the components first of all i will import some of the libraries yeah so these are the libraries are needed so here if you see i'm using url lib request so this package i'll be using to download my data okay from the url then I'm using zip file package because I, after downloading the data, I also need to perform the unzip operation. Okay. Then I'm also importing my uh, custom logger and I'm also importing this get size. Okay. Inside my common, as you can see, if I go to here, so inside common.py, we have created this get size. Okay. This, this, uh, model. Okay. So we'll be using this thing also. Now let me execute.
so first of all i will create one class called data ingestion here okay so this is my components data ingestion components and it will take your data ingestion configuration okay so this configuration it will take these are the configuration it will take and i will get the configuration my configuration manager class okay and here i'm initializing my config and uh, here i will define two method one is like download data from the url so this is the first method so basically it will download the data from this url so here if you see first of all i am checking so here if you see i am providing my source url okay that means my data url as you can see source url this is the data url okay and where i want to download the file location i am giving here local file path that means this file okay it will download and after that i am logging everything like downloaded data okay from this following link and here if you see i am also using get size okay because i also want to see the size of the file okay so that's why i'm also using this get size uh like a model we have we are importing okay you can also uh, uh ignore it but i'm using because i also want to see the information of the data okay that's why i'm using this thing okay now the second method i will create which is nothing but extract zip file okay after downloading the data and to also extract so this is the method okay it will extract the zip file so here if you see i am giving the unzip directory first of all i am creating the unzip directory here that means this this directory i am creating okay and i am extracting my zip file and i am uploading inside my unzip file okay unzip file uh, uh, file folder so this is the code actually if you are familiar with python i think it is very much easy to understand okay i am expecting you are already familiar with the python object oriented programming okay so now let me execute my components creation is done now what i need to do i need to uh, create the pipeline okay now let's create the pipeline so to create the pipeline uh let me show you first of all i will handle my try accept block okay inside that first of all i am i am initialize my uh, configuration manager so this is the class I, I have initialized configuration manager and from this actually first of all i will take my data ingestion configuration okay that means these are the configuration i will take and i will store it okay see here i have stored okay now i'll call my components data ingestion components and it will take that data ingestion configuration okay so see inside this uh, data ingestion class i am passing this data ingestion configuration okay it will take now i can execute this two method okay now i'm first of all i'm calling my download file see here first of all it will download the data after that it will extract the zip file see second wise i'm extracting the zip file okay that's it now let's execute and see whether uh, it's working or not okay so i will just uh, save it not to less now let me execute see you can see the log here also okay See, created directory and created directory data ingestion as you can see it has created artifacts folder inside that it has created data ingestion folder okay and inside that it is downloading the data okay now let's wait see data in, uh, like uh, ingestion is done see after ingesting the data it has also unzipped the data okay see this is the samsung data and these are the csv file i think you i already showed you the data right so let me show you see if you just download the data you will see these are the files okay so we have already the file okay now as you can see this is the information related my data uh it is coming from the this one this method uh, i'm using get size okay it, it will return these are the information of related my data okay now we have successfully completed my data in this notebook experiment and it is working perfectly okay now what i need to do i need to convert this thing as my modular coding okay so we'll be converting this thing okay now see this is my data samsung data inside sorry uh, artifacts samsung data okay so this is my data uh yeah so it's working perfectly now let's uh, convert this thing as my modular coding uh so guys uh to convert uh, this notebook uh as my modular coding first of all uh i need to update my as you can see just always follow this readme.md first of all i need to update my config yaml so which i have already updated okay i don't need to update it then after that i need to update my params uh which i am not using in this case i need to update the entity okay so now let's copy the entity from here uh let's copy the entity so this is my entity i will copy and left hand side you will see there is an entity folder we had created let me show you components constant entity okay see this is the entity folder inside that we have one constructor file let's open it and let's paste the code here okay so this is the entity you, you need to just copy uh, the code as it is okay because we have already completed okay you don't need to change anything here now we have uh added the entity now i need to 
add my configuration manager okay so here left hand side you have src inside that you have one in the folder called config okay just open this config and you have one configuration dot pi file i will open this thing okay so what i will do i will come here and i will uh, copy this to import i will paste it here and simultaneously i will also copy the entire class now i'll copy paste here yeah this thing and this uh, thing is missing because we haven't imported this uh, entity i need to import it see this is very much easy once you have done the notebook implementation you just need need to copy paste the code here okay that's it okay it is completely like very easy okay now uh first of all what i will do i will import two more library here so i'll just write from path uh if i need path then i will import it as of now path is not required here uh yeah so let me uh import uh my uh this one data insertion config from my entity okay so i'll just write from uh text summarization uh from entity okay import uh data injection config okay that's it uh why i have given bracket because let's say if i want to import data validation config okay i will just give comma and i will write it here that's why i have given comma here okay you can either uh, remove the comma uh, uh you can either remove the bracket it's fine okay now this thing is done i think everything is fine yeah so we have successfully conf uh, compiled our uh, config manager now let me see the like next step i need to write my components okay so to create the components uh, left hand side you can see in, inside src folder i have uh, one folder called components okay so let me create the components here so just click here and let's create the components i will name these components as data ingestion data ingestion.py okay now i will come here and first of all let me copy these are the import data ingestion i'll paste it here okay now i'll copy the code as it is this is my data ingestion related code i'll paste it here uh here if you see i i need to again import my data ingestion uh config and uh this path library okay anything else yeah so let me import my path so from uh from path leap import path okay i also need to import data ingestion config so let me import it so i'll just write from text summarizer dot entity input my data ingestion config okay that's it i think everything is fine here yeah now let me see the next step which is nothing but i need to complete my pipeline okay so to create the pipeline again just go to src folder and here you have one folder called pipeline okay now let's create one uh, pipeline here uh, so i'll name this file as uh, stage one stage uh, zero one data indication okay always follow this uh, step by step process uh, then actually it would be very uh, easy for you to maintain your code okay so this is my first stage actually data ingestion that's why i've created this pipeline as stage z uh, zero one okay so inside that i need to mention my pipeline so first of all you need to import some of the libraries here so here i'm importing my uh yeah so here i have imported as you can see my configuration manager from this configuration this folder uh this folder configuration folder okay I am importing my configuration okay as you can see this thing this configuration class and uh, after that i am importing my data ingestion from my data ingestion components as you can see this is my components data ingestion okay 
if i open this data ingestion.py this is the class i'm importing okay then after that i'm also importing my custom login okay now the first thing actually i will write i will create one class called a data ingestion training pipeline and the constructor actually uh, i don't need that's why i'm passing this thing okay i'm not writing anything here inside that i will create uh, one method called main okay yeah so here you need to copy the same code uh, you have written here i'll copy now from this notebook and i'll paste it here that's it okay so this is your pipeline okay now yeah so i think uh, this code is ready but if you want to execute it uh, from your endpoints you need to write it inside main.py also okay so i'll open the main.py and i'll remove this thing this is not required so here uh, the first thing actually i need to import my uh, this pipeline okay this uh, stage one data ingestion so for this actually i'll write i'll just write text uh, summarizer dot pipeline dot stage one data ingestion okay i'll import my uh this uh this class okay yeah then i also need my logger so i'll just write text summarizer logging import logger okay that's it now here i already prepared yeah so what i'm doing First of all, I am giving a stage name, which is nothing but data ingestion stage. Okay. First of all, it will log like data ingestion stage started. Okay. Then I am calling this uh, data ingestion training pipeline. I am initializing this object. Okay. Now from this object, I am calling this main method. Okay. As you can see, uh, if I open my data ingestion, uh, this is the main method. Okay. If you call this main method, it will start everything. Okay. Like download zip file, extract zip file, everything. It will start. Okay. Once it is done, then I am telling my data ingestion uh, like completed. Okay. Then I am handling my exception. Okay. That's it. Now I think uh, everything I have completed. Now let me run and see whether it's working or not. So for this actually, what I will do, I will delete this artifacts, okay, to verify it whether it's working or not, okay. And then I will open my terminal, and let's clear it. And I will just write Python uh, main dot pi, okay. Now you you just need to write uh, like run your main dot pi, okay, and all the pipeline will start, okay, automatically one by one. Now see, it has created data ingestion, um, okay, inside artifacts. And it is downloading the data. Now let's wait whether it is able to download or not. See, guys, it has successfully completed data ingestion. Now, if I also show you the log, see, it has started data ingestion and everything it has completed successfully, as you can see here. Okay. Now, to verify it, let's open our data artifacts, data ingestion. See, uh, it has downloaded the data, data.zip file, and it has also unzipped. Okay. See, this is my zip file. and. Uh, all the data is there okay that means my first stage is okay first component is working perfectly which is nothing but data ingestion uh now uh we can create our other stage okay other components which is nothing but data uh, validation data transformation these are the thing we'll be also creating but before that let me uh like commit the changes because as you can see uh, there are lots of uh, commit i need to do but i don't want to upload this artifacts okay these are the data so i will mention this thing inside git ignore so i'll come at the last and here i will just write artifacts okay rt like i think it's artifacts and i want to ignore everything inside artifacts okay now if i save with this file now as you can see it will uh, ignore these other data okay now i can uh, commit these other changes only okay so i'll open my terminal i will uh, write git add and git commit uh data ingestion notebook added then git push origin main okay done now let me see whether it is able to do it or not so i will open my github uh, so guys as you can see uh, it has updated everything successfully okay so now uh, what i will do next i will create my uh, data validation on like notebook experiment okay after data ingestion i will start the data validation okay it will validate the data okay like if you see 
what is validation uh, if i open it uh, see uh, this is my data format okay so these are the three folders are available okay so it will check these are the folders are available or not okay if it's not available that means my data is not in correct format okay so this kinds of validation you can also perform okay so uh, i will uh, write this uh, validation okay uh, notebook experiment then i will uh, convert it to our modular coding okay uh, so guys now let's start implementing our next component which is nothing but data validation okay so to do it actually i will create a So to do, so to do it, actually, I will create another file inside resource. Okay, I will name it as uh, zero two data validation because this is my second components, right? So that's why data validation validation dot ip Wendy. Yeah. So first of all, let me close these are the thing. This is not required as of now. I'll also close this thing. So the first thing actually uh, I need to do, I'll follow the same notebook, okay? So first of all, I need to change my directory. So let me do it. I'll copy paste the code from here only. Let me select the kernel. Yeah. I'll copy. See, once you have done the implementation of uh, one component, okay? So you can follow the uh, same thing in your other component as well okay only the logic will uh, be different okay otherwise everything will remain same okay the same process you need to follow okay now i'm inside text summarization uh yeah now i think yeah so now what i need to do first of all i need to define my entity okay so let me define the entity so i have already prepared the entity so this is going to be very small entity so it will only return three things your root path okay and start us file okay and all required file okay this three thing but before that i think you remember we need to update my co uh, config.yaml okay so let's update the config.yaml so i will uh, come here and i've already prepared this data validation configuration okay see this is the data validation configuration so it, this is the root directory called data validation again inside artifacts it will create another folder called data validation inside that it will save all the validation related artifacts okay so basically it will create one status.txt file and first of all, it will check whether these uh, these are the three files are available or not. If I show you, train, test, okay, or validation. These are the three files are available or not. The, if if these these are available, it will return status txt as true, okay. Otherwise, it will return as false, okay. Why I need to check like my uh, data? Because see, sometimes if you if you are ingesting your data and you, if it is not in correct format, okay. At a time, whenever you will start your model training, at a time it will throw error, okay. So before giving the data to your model into verify whether your data is in correct format or not okay this kinds of check actually you can perform inside your data validation okay so that's why i have given one uh, variable called all required files and i am mentioning all required files actually i need for this training okay you can either mention this data underscore dick dot json it is completely fine you can add it here okay but i have been added in this case i have just kept it, kept it as simple okay you can design in your own way okay i have just shown this thing only now let me save this thing and this thing only i'm returning in my entity as you can see root directory status file all required file okay the same thing we are returning here okay i think you are already familiar with this uh entity concept okay i discussed in my uh data ingestion one okay and if you see all required files should be a list type because if you see this is a list that's why i'm mentioning list here okay now let me execute all right now what i need to do again i need to write my configure configuration manager i will import these other thing again yeah so config manager i will copy this class as it is only i will change the method there yeah inside that i will prepare one method called it uh, get data validation configuration okay so this is the method and this is the return type we have already created the return type called data validation and it will return three things your these three things okay now if you see this three thing it will return okay root directory status file okay and all required file i'm reading this thing from my config.yaml okay that's it now uh, and after that i'm returning that my data validation configuration now let me execute yeah uh yeah i'm i'm going a little bit fast because i have already discussed these are the thing okay the same thing actually we are copy pasting okay in, in our other component as well okay 
yeah now what i need to do i need to uh, write my uh, components because configuration manager is done okay so let me write the components so i'll come here so here first of all i need to import some of the libraries so i only need os and my login okay then first of all i will create one class called data validation okay similar wise we created here called data invasion okay and inside that I, it will take a data validation configuration which is nothing but this configuration it will take it will come from here okay then i'm initializing here okay now i will create one method called validate all file exist okay so this is the final method and this is a simple python code as you can see here so first of all it will check in this artifacts okay data in this samsam data okay in this folder it will check whether these three file are available or not okay if this three file are available okay so first of all it will check whether it is not available okay see i'm checking if this file not in this all required file if it is not available then it will uh write validation status as false okay as you can see it will write validation status as false if it is available then it will write validation status as true okay then after that it will return my validation status okay and this file i'm saving inside my data validation folder okay that's it this is the simple logic i'm just writing here okay using this voice package okay now let me execute yeah so you can uh, also add like so many steps to do the data validation but i just kept my folder validation only okay you can also keep the data type okay column verification everything you can do okay but i kept it as uh, like uh, very simple so that actually um, you can get the idea and you can write your own logic here okay now this thing is done um, now what i need to do i need to write my pipeline okay now let's write the pipeline so i will open my data validation yeah so this thing i have executed so pipeline i need to write so the same thing again i will copy paste okay so i'm handling my try except block okay then i'm initializing my configuration manager this class then i'm calling my get data validation config this one okay then i'm initializing it here then i'm calling my data validation class okay then i'm passing this data validation config inside then i'm running my validate all file exist okay this is the final method now let me run and see whether it's working or not okay see it has successfully run now if i go to my artifacts okay see now it will create another folder called data validation okay now if i open the data validation now if i open the uh, status of txt file now you can see status is true because all file are exist okay if you see uh, inside data validation all file are exist okay that's why it is a true uh, let's say if you are not giving this test okay otherwise uh, let's say if you are not giving this test folder okay so what it will return it will return false okay so that's kind of verification it is performing here okay so we have completed successfully this notebook experiment now let's convert this thing in our modular coding okay so first of all again just follow the readme okay first of all what i need to do i need to update my config which i have already updated now i perhaps i i'm not using here i will update my entity okay so again i'll open my entity so inside src i have entity folder i'll open the entity okay so, so the same entity i will copy from here so this is the entity i'll copy and uh, i will paste it inside my entity okay that's it now let me close it okay now entity i have done now what i need to do i need to set my configuration manager okay as you can see here configuration manager so let me do it i will open my configuration.py and let me copy the this method only because this thing will remain common i have already written i will copy this method only and i will open my configuration.py and here i will mention this thing okay get data validation configuration and i also need to uh, uh, like import my data validation config here so let me import i'll just give comma and import it okay that's it uh yeah now what i need to do uh, let me open my readme.md again yeah now i need to update my components okay so to update your components i will again come to my components folder okay and here let's create one file called data validation data underscore validation dot file okay so inside that i will mention my data validation config uh, like uh, components so here let me yeah so i will copy the code okay now i will copy the same code as it is data validation yeah i i need to again import my data validation so let me do it from the entity itself i will import it okay data validation config now i think everything is fine here 
okay now this thing is done then what i need to do i need to create the pipeline okay so now let's go to the pipeline for that i have this is the pipeline i will create another pipeline here i will name it as stage 2 okay data underscore validation dot pi okay that's it now i will copy the same code from here only data validation okay i need to only change this uh, injection to validation validation i think it's fine now instead of uh, data injection i will import my data validation one okay data validation yeah now i also need to change it here uh it should be data validation config okay now yeah this thing also yeah so i have completed uh, this thing as well now this thing i need to uh right inside my main.py so i'll open my main.py because as you can see if you see the readme i have updated a pipeline now i need to update my main.py okay now i'll open my main.py first of all i need to import so i'll just write from text summarization dot pipeline dot stays zero to data validation okay i'll import my uh, data validation training pipeline sorry data validation training pipeline yeah now I'll copy and uh, just write it here. Instead of data ingestion, it should be data validation. Okay, and here also I'll write data validation. Okay, now I think uh, everything is done. Now let me execute. Uh, okay guys so i have uh, replaced my data ingestion only so i don't need to do it like that so let me go back again yeah let me import data validation yeah so i will copy the same thing and i need to write it here okay because this is my data ingestion i just replaced it okay so what i will do i will just now write it here data validation validation and uh, now let me copy Mm, yeah it should be validation only yeah so i think now it's done now let me run and see whether it's working or not so before that i will again delete my artifacts order and now let me verify it okay i will clear it and i'll just write python main.py So it has started my data ingestion. Let's wait and see. Okay, it's giving one error. Uh, validation has no attribute download file. Uh, line number 14, data validation.py. So let's go to line number 14. Uh, data validation.py, line number 14. Okay, guys, so error is like I'm using the same pipeline, okay, from my data ingestion only. So, this thing I need to change it. So, I'll come here, I will copy the same pipeline I created here, and I will mention it here, okay. So, that is why it was giving me the error. And now I think it should work. Yeah. Now, let me save it and now let's try it, okay. Let me see whether it's working or not. Again, I will remove my artifacts. Yeah. So that's how actually you can see the uh, like error okay uh, using this exception and you can uh, like fix it i'll just write python main.py now i think it should work see guys it has run successfully now if i open my artifacts 
See, it has ingested the data. All the data is there. Now, data validation is also there. And status is true. That means everything is working fine. Okay. So, we have completed our second component as well, which is nothing but data validation. Now, uh, we are ready to write our third components, which is nothing but data transformation. Okay. As you already saw in my notebook experiment, okay, the text summarization notebook experiment, I need to convert my data to features. Okay. So, this kinds of conversion actually we'll be doing in these components only. Okay. So we'll be writing these components, okay? But before that, I will uh, write my uh, notebook experiment. Then I will write the actual components, okay? Uh, so guys, we have uh, completed our data validation uh, component as well. Now, uh, actually, we can start our data transformation one. Uh, but before that, let's uh, commit the changes because we haven't committed yet. So let me commit. So I'll open my terminal and uh, just write git add uh, space dot. Then I'll just write git commit my pen name uh, data validation added. Well, let's say I'll tell completed. Okay, then let's do the push git push origin main. Yeah, it's done. Now we can start implementing our, our data transformation one. Uh, so guys the uh, data transformation is nothing. So if you uh, See this notebook, I think I have already explained this text summarization. So there actually I was uh, converting my data to features. Okay, so let me show you once So the same code actually will be replicating here. Uh, so here convert example to features Okay, so if you just give your uh, actual data, so it will convert to uh, input IDs attention mask and levels Okay, so these are the thing actually I need to train my uh, model. Okay, so this thing actually will be writing uh, inside our data transformation one. So let me close this thing. Uh, I will also close this to one validation configuration. Yeah. Okay. Now, first of all, let me do the notebook experiment. So in the resource folder, I will take another notebook called 03 uh, data transformation. okay now let me copy paste the same code here because first of all i need to change the directory i'll say i will select the kernel now if i do pwd okay as you can see i'm inside a resource okay now let's change it okay now the first thing what I need to do, first thing I will be creating the entity, okay? But before that, uh, I think you remember, we need to write our config.yml file, okay? So let me write the config.yml file. So I have already prepared the config.yml file. So this is the configuration of your data transformation, okay? So inside uh, artifacts, it will create another folder called data transformation. Inside that actually, uh, it will save your transform data, okay? Like after applying the transformation, uh, it will save the data, okay? Inside this data indication, and there will be a folder called Samsung data, okay? And here it actually it will save it. And uh, tokenizer name, as you can see, I was using that uh, Google Pegasus CNN daily mail model, okay? The same model actually I'll be using for my tokenization also, okay? I, I have already explained this thing. Now let me save it and now if I go to my uh, data transformation, now let me write the entity, okay? So uh, this is your entity. Uh, so here actually, this is my data transformation configuration. Here actually I'm reading my root directory, data pile path, okay? Uh, like data path, like this is the data path as you can see. Uh, this is the data, inside data indication, I have some, some data, okay? So this path actually I'm returning so that I can get the path and I can access the data, okay? And I can apply the transformation and my tokenizer file path, okay? So this is the tokenizer path, okay? Uh, tokenizer path means like this is the tokenizer name, okay? Like it will automatically download the tokenizer model from the hugging phase itself, okay? Now let me execute it. Now I will create the configuration manager. I think you remember. After that, I will configure uh, create the configuration manager, okay? So I'll copy the same thing from here only. Okay, now here I will create one method called get data transformation configuration. 
okay this this thing will only return this to uh, th three variable okay as you can see first of all i am creating that directory okay then i'm returning uh, your root directory data file path and token as a name that's that's it only and this is the return type of your method okay? this is the return type we have created now let me save it now what i will do uh, i will create the components okay now let's create the components so i'll come here first of all i will uh, initialize one class inside that i will initialize my configuration and my tokenizer okay but before that uh, i need to do the some i need to do some import operation okay so these are the import are needed as you can see i'm importing logger uh, my auto tokenizer and load data from dix okay now let me execute so this is not an error okay this is just a warning so you can ignore it okay it's done now if you want to like uh, remove this just run it again okay it will disappear uh yeah so we have done the import operation and here I, if you see i'm initializing my tokenizer and in here i'm initializing my config which is nothing but data ingestion config okay so this is the same method actually i will just copy paste uh, convert example to features okay this is the same method actually i'm copy pasting as you can see from that uh, text summarization notebook okay and it will return me input ids attention mask and levels okay and uh, this thing actually i need to start so i'm calling this method as you can see inside this uh, method called convert okay this is the final method if you call this method so it will uh, start uh, like your data transformation okay now let me uh, execute okay and after that i'm saving my data here okay as you can see inside uh, my data data transformation now uh, this thing is done then i need to create my pipeline okay now let's create the pipeline so this is the same pipeline i'll just copy um, yeah so first of all i'm initializing my configuration manager from this actually i'm calling this get data transformation config after that i'm creating one object that object i'm passing in my data transformation class okay and i'm ca calling my this convert method and it will start the data transformation okay now let me execute and see whether it's working or not see um it has created data transformation folder now inside that after uh, doing the data transformation it will save the data see it is applying transformation okay it is applying that uh, convert to features okay now as you can see guys uh, inside data transformation it has saved my samsung data and it is already uh, transformed okay so now we can use this data uh, for our model training purpose okay now we have completed this notebook experiment now let's convert this thing as our modular coding okay so first thing what i need to do i will save this notebook and i will open my entity so let's open my entity entity okay i will copy the entity from here Mm, I will uh, go a little bit first because I think you already got the idea what I am doing here. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, after entity, what I need to do, I need to copy the configuration manager. Okay. So let me copy this method and I will open my configuration. And here I will add it. And this thing I need to import here. After validation, I will import transformation okay uh, i think yeah everything is fine now uh finally i will create my components so i will come inside components let's create one components here called data transformation okay and uh, here uh, let me copy these are the import okay after that i will copy this class as it is okay and i also need to do the import operation so let me copy from this previous one and i'll replace it here the data transformation okay that's it i think everything is fine okay now uh, components creation is done now let's create the pipeline so i'll come inside pipeline and let's create another folder uh, file here called stays 03 data transformation not by data transformation dot 
now inside that i will now inside uh, this data transformation i will copy the same code as it is and i will paste it here so here instead of data validation oh, sorry instead of data validation i will import my data transformation and uh, i need to change this uh, name to transformation okay now i will copy the same pipeline from my notebook let's copy i'll replace it here okay it's done now let's uh, call this thing inside our main.py okay but before that let me close these are the thing yeah i'll open my main.py let me first of all import it so I'll, yeah now stays three data transformation and it is data transformation Ring pipeline okay now i'll copy this same code okay i will change the name just here copy the class and i'll paste it here okay and uh, this should be also transformation Okay, that's it i think uh, it's done now let me uh test it whether it's working or not but before that let me delete the artifacts okay now uh, just for verification i'll open my terminal let me clear it okay now i'll just write python main.py uh, see guys it has started my data transition as you can see it's running so let's wait okay i will come back when it is done see guys it is successfully done now if i open my artifacts and if i show you the data transformation see everything is running successfully okay that means we have successfully completed our data ingestion component as well okay now uh, what we can do we can start our model trainer okay model trainer uh, components so before that actually uh, we'll uh, do the experiment okay on the notebook side then we'll be creating the actual code okay so guys now let's start with our model trainer part okay so let's do the notebook experiment first of all so i'll again create one notebook here called a model trainer okay i'll give it uh, zero uh, zero four model trainer okay and uh, let me close these are the thing okay now i will just copy paste the same thing from this notebook let me do it quickly i'll change the directory okay all right now uh, first thing what i need to do i need to add my config.yaml okay so for model trainer i have already prepared the config.yaml okay so these are the configuration i needed so basically it will create another folder inside artifacts called model trainer okay inside that actually it will save my model okay and see this is my data path so as you can see already we have already prepared the data inside data transformation okay so this is the data path i am returning okay and this is my model uh, checkpoint so i will be using google pegasus cnn daily mail model okay i am defining the name here okay now i think you remember one thing you need to do which is nothing but uh, set up your parameters okay after configuration now actually we are uh, like preparing the model okay now whenever we are preparing the model that means we need to set the parameters okay now let's set the parameters because if i uh, open this thing um, if i open your text summarization notebook 
uh, I think you saw there, uh, I was saying, setting some like training parameter. Okay. These are the parameter I was setting. Okay. And this value I was hard coding. So instead of hard coding this value here, you just keep it inside params.yml and read it. Okay. As per your uh, needed. Okay. And from there, actually, you can use it. I'll show you both way. You can either keep it as it is. Okay. Either you can read from uh, YAML file. Okay. It's possible. So let me open uh, this uh, params.yml. Uh, so I already prepared this params. So I will copy paste. So I will remove this key value. It's not needed because I have my training arguments. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is the same thing. Uh, if I open, uh, first of all, I am doing my. So here, if you see, I'm taking the same parameters, number of uh, like number training epochs. Okay. Then warm up steps. Okay. If you see number training epochs, warm up steps. Okay. Then uh, part device train batch size. So all the parameters actually I'm taking and I'm storing it here, as you can see here. So let's say if you want to change this parameter, okay, later on, just open this params.yml file and change the value here, okay? So it will reflect in your whole code, okay? You don't need to open your model trainer like file and you don't need to change it here, okay? So that is the convenience if you're creating this kinds of parameter, okay? So all the parameter I have mentioned here, okay? Now let me save it. Uh, then I'll open my model trainer, okay? Now first, uh, the first thing what I need to do, I need to uh, prepare my entity. Now let's prepare our entity. This is basically my entity. So it will return your root directory, data file, path, model, checkpoint. Then uh, your these are the parameter also it will return. Okay. So all the parameter it will return. Okay. So now let me execute. Yeah. Then what I need to do, I need to uh, write my configuration manager. But before it, I need to import these are the library. Okay. Then I will uh, copy this configuration manager class as it is. Okay. And I will add one method called get model trainer config okay so this is the method and it will return uh all these are the variable as i mentioned inside my model trainer config okay so yeah so this is a simple uh like uh configuration manager uh class we have developed okay now what i need to do i need to prepare my components okay now let's create the components so components wise i will be using the same code from that notebook only so but before that let me uh, import these are the libraries okay these are the libraries are needed to train my model okay I, i'm importing my training arguments trainer data collector okay uh then auto um, ml for sequence to sequence lm okay auto tokenizer load data set everything i'm importing okay and then i'm also importing torch library now let me execute so this code actually i'll be just replicating uh this code actually i will be just replicating here only okay so this is my training code okay it's done if you want to ignore this error so just uh, run it again okay yeah now i will uh, prepare one uh, model trainer class okay and it will take your model trainer configuration okay then i will create one uh, final uh, training method okay so this is the final training method i have prepared and here i have written the same code only first of all i'm initializing my device okay tokenizer i'm loading model i'm loading okay then i'm in, uh, also setting up my data collator okay this is for the batches then if you see i'm loading my data from my dicks okay uh, sorry let me yeah uh, yeah so here if you see if i zoom out a little bit so yeah so here if you see i'm uh, loading my data okay from this uh, data path uh, that means from this data in, uh, transformation i'm loading my data then I'm setting up my training arguments. Okay, see, now I'm reading from my uh, this YAML file only, my params.yml only. Okay, so you can either read it like that. Okay, either you can read like that. Okay, both ways it's possible. Okay, so first of all, let me execute this thing. You can comment this one and you can uncomment this one. Okay, so this is the direct, direct approach. Okay, so if I show you, so this is the direct approach I was doing in my notebook. Okay, so here I was uh, like, uh, mentioning everything as it is okay here if you see as mentioning as it is but if you want to read it from yaml file params.yml file you can use this one okay both way i have kept here you can use anything okay no issue then after that this is the final training code okay i was executing so this is the final training code then i, I was started my training then after after training my model i'm saving my model okay inside my model trainer folder inside artifacts then i'm also saving my tokenizer as well as i was doing uh, here if you see after training uh, i was saving my model okay see i was saving my model and my tokenizer also okay so this is the simple training code uh here i have just prepared one method called train okay now let me execute 
okay then it's done now i need to create the pipeline so i will follow the same technique okay first of all i will initialize my config manager okay then i will call my um, model trainer okay config this thing i will take and i will create one object then i will uh, call my class final model trainer class okay and i will provide my configuration and i will call the final train okay train method okay and it will start the training now let's uh, test it whether it's working or not okay so i'll execute it see guys it has created model trainer folder now see training will start after some time and guys one thing if you see here i have taken uh, okay uh, okay it's throwing one error telling pytorch requires accelerate run uh, upgrade pip accelerated okay so if you are getting this error so what you can do just open up your text summarization notebook and just go up so there i was running three command okay uh, yeah so these three command actually you need to execute okay so let's copy one by one and i will open my terminal make sure you have activated your environment okay i'll clear it now let me run okay it's done then i will copy the second command okay then i will copy the third command now i hope it should work okay it's done now let me open my model trainer notebook and run it again so i won't be running this cell because i am already inside my if i show you pwd i am already inside inside my text summarization project okay now let me run from here now let's start the training okay so one thing i want to tell you as you can see here i am training training data as my test data okay because see if you are if i am taking like train data so it will take time lots of time to tra like train uh, train the model okay uh, so i'm recording the video just for quick purpose i have taken test data point for my training purpose okay but whenever you are training just try to mention it as train okay train okay you, you will just take your training data okay but for me i have taken test data because just for I, I just want to train it as quickly as possible okay that's why because if you see test data point i have around 800 data points only but training data point i have more than fourteen thousand. okay so that's why i have taken this thing okay uh it's uh throwing again one error so what i can do i can restart the runtime i think restart okay now let me execute it again So guys as you can see my training has started okay see uh, training has started uh, so it will take some time let's wait so if you are getting the error so what you can do just restart your runtime okay because you have installed those packages but it, it hasn't loaded okay in your environment so for this actually you need to restart the runtime So guys uh, training will take some time okay so once it is done okay i will come back so guys as you can see training is done okay and this is the matrix and all about okay you can see now if i show you this uh, model trainer folder so here it has saved my model okay see this is the model okay this is my train model and this is the tokenizer okay so here actually i was saving that so this thing actually we'll be using whenever we'll be doing the prediction okay so that means this uh, notebook experiment is working perfectly now let's convert it to our modular coding okay so before that uh, let me save this notebook file and uh, i'll close these are the thing uh yeah okay so the first thing what i need to do i need to write my entity so for this let's open my entity so this is the entity and let me copy the entity from here okay now uh, what i will do i will uh, uh, write my configuration manager okay so let me copy this method 
I will open this configuration.py and here let me mention. Okay, now let me import this model uh, trainer config uh, here. Okay, so I have imported. Now I think everything is fine. Uh, yeah, everything is fine. Now let's uh, create our uh, uh, components. Okay, so I will come inside components. Now let me create uh, uh, model trainer. Okay, model underscore trainer dot py. Okay, now I will copy the code as it is. Then I will copy this class. Okay, now let me import this thing also model trainer config from this entity. Okay, so I'll just write from text summarization dot entity uh, import this uh, model trainer config. Okay, that's it. Now I think everything is fine. Now let's create the pipeline. So I'll come inside pipeline. Now let's create pipeline here. I'll name it as stage uh, 04. Model trainer. Okay, now I'll copy the same code. I'll paste it here and instead of data transformation, I'll import model trainer and my uh, model trainer. Yeah. Now let me change the name to model trainer, uh, model training pipeline. Okay. Now I will copy this pipeline as it is from my notebook. Mm. Yeah, I will copy it here. Okay, so now let's mention this thing in our uh, main.py. Uh, but before that, let me close. Okay, now I'll open my main.py. Uh, yeah, first of all, I need to import. Uh, stays 04 model trainer model trainer training pipeline and uh, i'll copy the same thing okay so it should be model trainer stays okay So I'm calling my model trainer pipeline and I'm calling this main okay main method from it. Okay. So this thing is done. Now let's test it whether it's working or not. Okay. So before that, what I will do, I will uh, remove this artifacts. Okay. And let me start the training. Yeah. So I will clear. Now let me run Python uh, main.py. So guys, you can see it has started. So first of all, it is in ingesting the data. Okay. So it will take some time. Okay. I will wait. See transformation also done. Now it is, uh, it has started the training. The model trainer has started now, as you can see. Now, after some times, it will start training the model. See guys, uh, training has started, okay? So it will take time, okay? So I will wait, okay? I will come back once it is done. Uh, so guys, as you can see, training is done, okay? Now if I open this uh, model trainer folder, now you can see this model is presented, okay? Uh, with that, the tokenizer also. So yeah, we have successfully completed our model trainer as well, okay? Now uh, we can start write our model evolution uh, component as well. 
So we'll start writing the model evaluation. Uh, but before that, we'll uh, do the notebook experiment. Okay, then I'll write the actual component. Okay. Uh, so guys, now let's start with our model evaluation notebook experiment. So what I will do, I will create another IPYNB file inside the research. Okay, so let me create it. So I'll just name it as uh, 05 uh, model evaluation. Okay, dot IPYNB. So I'll uh, close these are the tab. Okay. Now let's copy paste the same thing from this notebook only because this will remain common. Uh, let me select the kernel here. Yeah. So let me execute. Okay, now if I write PWD, so it will give me this directory only. Okay, now uh, let me create uh, the configuration. Okay, config.yml. So I already prepared this configuration for model evaluation. So it will return you the matrix actually you will be generating like row matrix i think you uh, know if you just open text summarization okay there i was calculating row matrix okay if i show you uh, see this is the like evolution code i was executing and it was uh, generating row matrix for me okay here if you see so this matrix actually as a csv file will save okay inside our data uh, like model evolution okay uh yeah so i have already find this model evolution see it will create one uh, folder called model evolution inside rtx okay and this is my data path uh, it is presented inside my data transformation this is my model path okay so the model path actually we have saved here so inside model trainer this is the model path this is the tokenizer path okay inside this tokenizer and this is the matrix file actually we want to save okay inside model evolution i will save one file called matrix.csv okay so this is going to be my matrix okay now let me save it now i'll close it now let me prepare this uh, uh like uh, entity okay so this is your entity so it will return a root direct, uh, directory data path model file path tokenizer path and your matrix file path okay now let me execute okay now i need to prepare my uh, configure configuration manager okay so let me define so i'll copy paste the same code and inside that i will mention this method called data uh, get a model config uh, called uh, get model uh, evaluation configuration okay so this is the final method yeah it will return these are the variable only and this is the return type now let me execute yeah so now what i will do i will create the components quickly so before that i will import some of the libraries so these are the libraries are needed okay uh, these are the thing now let me execute Now I'll uh, like write the components. So first of all, I will define one model evaluation class. Okay, inside that, I will uh, replicate the same code. If you see, this is the uh, these two function actually is needed: to generate bash uh, chunks. Okay, and your calculate matrix on test ds. Okay, I'll just copy paste the same code. So I have already prepared. So let me copy from here only. Yeah. Yeah, so if you see this is this is the same function actually I'm using generate batch chunks and calculate matrix on DS. Okay, and these two things actually I'm calling inside my evaluate. As you can see here, first of all, I'm loading my mod tokenizer model. Okay. And uh let me complete it also. Then after that, I'm loading my data, and here I'm calculating this row matrix, as you can see. Okay, I'm uh, defining my row name, okay, and uh I'm loading my matrix, okay, and I'm calculating this uh matrix here. And after that, I'm saving as a CSV file, okay, inside my model evaluation folder. That's it, okay. Now, let me execute. Yeah. So this thing is done. Now let's uh, create the pipeline and see whether it's working or not. Okay. I will write the pipeline. This is the pipeline. And now let me execute and see. See, it's running. So it will create one folder called model evaluation. Okay. Now see, it is doing the evaluation. Now let's wait. See guys, uh, model evaluation started. So this is loading. 
so it will take some time let's wait okay i'll come back once it is done uh so guys as you can see uh my uh, evolution is done so now if i open this evolution folder you can see this matrix or csv okay now let me open see this is your row score okay all the score it has saved okay so this score is not good because uh i already told you i am i uh, trained my data on my test data and uh, uh it's not uh, like uh, recommended okay uh you need to train your uh, like model under train data points okay then you can uh, like uh, calculate this row score and you will see like good results and again i was uh, like uh, taken just uh, one epoch to train the model okay so it, it won't be good so for this at least uh, go with any box okay you will get a good results okay so it's working perfectly now let's convert this thing as our modular coding okay so for this first of all i will open my entity uh, so let's write the entity here i will open uh let's copy the entity from here okay now after that i will also uh, write my configuration let me copy this method let me open the configuration uh, config configuration yeah dot pi let me add it here okay now let me import this model evaluation config okay now uh, i will create the components okay uh, so to create the components i will come inside components and here let me create one components or model evaluation dot pi okay so let me import uh, these are the packages okay with that i also need my model evolution config okay then i will copy paste the same code as it is okay uh anything left yeah so everything is fine i think now uh, let me write the pipeline okay so i'll come inside pipeline let me create one pipeline here i'll just name it as stays uh, 05 model evaluation dot pi okay let me import some of the libraries here and uh, this is my model evaluation pipeline okay the same thing we have written so far yeah so i think i have uh, written the pipeline as well now let's call this thing inside our main.py so i'll open my main.py okay first of all let me import my model evaluation pipeline okay model evaluation pipeline now here let me define this model evaluation stage okay so this is the model, model evaluation stage okay now this thing is completed uh now let me run and test it okay whether it's working or not so guys uh, let me run it and let me see whether it's working or not okay because it will take time again it will train the model and all okay so let me do it and uh, uh, if it is working then you will see that model evaluation folder okay inside that it will save that uh, csv file okay now let me test it and uh, i'll show you okay so guys uh, i have already trained the model and uh, it is working okay all the stages is running perfectly as you can see this is the model evaluation and inside that it has also saved the matrix okay that means everything is working fine all the pipeline is working fine okay so guys we have completed all the components okay like uh, our data integration data validation transformation model trainer evaluation everything we have completed okay now what we need to do we need to create one uh, web application okay we will be creating the first api uh, api because uh we we need to create the prediction pipeline as well because see as of now we have completed a training pipeline okay and training pipeline is working perfectly we are able to train our model but if i want to do the prediction on the new data okay from the user data so how we can do it so for this actually we need to create one prediction pipeline okay and with that i will be creating one first api uh, like you can say api or let's say uh, ui okay user interface so that user will put one text here and it will give you the su summarization okay so this kinds of thing actually we'll be doing 
but before that let me commit the changes because as of now we haven't done the commit so i will open my terminal i'll just write git add and then git commit uh model evolution completed okay now let's do git push origin main yeah so it's done guys okay now uh, let's write our uh, like uh, prediction pipeline and our final app okay like final user app uh, so guys now let's start writing our prediction pipeline okay so for this actually what i will do inside pipeline folder i will create one file called prediction okay so i'll just write predict prediction dot file yeah and uh, i will be following the same thing as i did in our text summarization as you can see at the last uh, i was doing the prediction okay so i'll be using this code only as it is okay uh, yeah so i already prepared so let me just quickly show you um so first of all you need some imports okay so i'm importing this pipeline and all okay tokenizer and everything and uh, first of all i will define one class called prediction uh, pipeline okay and inside that i will initialize my get model evolution configuration because uh if you see here if i open my uh sorry if i open my uh configuration config.yml okay so here if you see here i was returning my model file path and my tokenizer file okay tokenizer path so these two things actually i need to load my model to load my tokenizer okay so that is why i'm i i, I need this uh evaluation configuration okay from this actually i can access my model and my uh, tokenizer okay presented inside the artifacts okay so that is why i need it then i will define one predict method inside this uh, prediction pipeline okay so this is the final method so first of all it will load the tokenizer as you can see here then i'm writing the same code as you can see uh here so here if you see this is the gen keywords and the reference okay then i'm loading the pipeline everything i'm doing as same okay as you can see here okay and here i'm loading my model from the config okay and also i'm loading my tokenizer because i have initialized my tokenizer here now if you want some like uh bigger output from your model you can increase this max length otherwise just keep it as 128 okay this is the default okay as i already showed you that uh like uh, slide bar okay uh whenever i was open that uh online tool okay i think you remember okay and once you your model will do the prediction okay this prediction actually i will extract that uh, like summary text and i will return it okay to the ui so that that is what i have done here okay only so this code is like very simple now what i need to do i need to uh, integrate with this in with our first api okay so we'll be creating my web application so i'll open the app.py for this so first of all i'll do some import okay so i'm importing first api then evicorn these are the things okay you need then i'm also importing uh, from the text summarization pipeline prediction and my prediction pipeline okay which is nothing but this class i'm importing okay then after that i need to uh, first of all initialize my uh, first api okay so this is the default route so whenever you will uh, hit that route okay it will open slash docs okay which will give you the first api ui okay then i will keep two route here one is for our training so this is the training route so if you just give slash train okay so it will start the training as you can see it will run your main.py okay as you can see i am running as a command so i am using voice.system okay I inside voice.system if you pass any python command okay it will execute okay uh, it will detect as a command and it will execute so what i as of now how i was running my training pipeline i was executing this main.py manually right but this thing actually i am running as a pythonic way so i am just writing void dot system and here i'm mentioning the command python main.py it will start the training when once training is done it will return the success message okay training success message and if any exception occurs okay it will return the exception as well okay so this is the training route and now i will also uh define the prediction route so guys this is the prediction route if you just go to slash predict okay here i'm initializing my prediction pipeline okay class this is the object and from this one i'm calling the predict method okay which is nothing but this one okay it will do the prediction and it will give me that text okay i'll, I'll return to my uh, ey okay so that is that is the thing only now if you want to run it so you need to initialize your host and port okay so this is the host and port 
now i think yeah everything is fine now let me run and let me show you whether it's working or not okay so i'll open my terminal so let me execute app.py python app.py what is the port number port number is 8080 so first of all let it run okay then i will open that So guys, it's running as you can see here, okay, uh, to this URL. So now we'll just open up your any browser and just write localhost port number 80, okay. If you just search it, now see guys, this is the UI of your first API, okay. So if you are using first API, so you don't need to create any like HTML code for it. It will give you default one uh, UI, okay. So this is the UI. So here I have two route. One is like training and one is like prediction, okay. So if you want to train it, so here you just need to click on try out, okay. Then if you just execute it, it will start the training. Okay. So let me show you. I will just execute it here. But before that, what I will do, I will delete this artifacts. Okay. Yeah. Now let me show you. If I click on execute, see guys, it will start the training. See, it has started training. And if I open it, now you, you can see it has uh, created this artifacts folder inside that it is ingesting the data. Okay. See guys. Uh, so we have created the UI. Now actually you don't need to run the code. So you will have the UI and from the UI itself, actually, you can start your pipeline and you can also do the prediction. Okay. So let's wait. It will take uh, time. Okay. To train the model. So you guys transformation has uh, started now. See, it has started the model trainer. So it will take time to train the model. Okay. I will come back once it is done. So guys, uh, you can see training is completed and uh, this is my model trainer and see it has saved the model and my tokenizer. Okay. Now let's do the prediction. So what I will do, I will open my browser again uh yeah i'll open my browser again okay i uh, see it's telling training successful okay now what i will do i will click on predict this is my predict route and i will just click on try it out and here you need to put the text okay so what i will do i will copy one dialog so i think i have the dialog here i think somewhere i was printing the dialog right so let me yeah so this is the dialog so i will copy the dialog as it is okay i'll copy And I will just paste it here. Okay, now let me execute it. So this return status should be okay and 200. Okay, that means everything will uh, execute successfully. So this is my actual dialog as you can see. Okay, and see, guys, uh, it has predicted and it has also returned the model summary. See, this is the summary. Okay. I'm also printing on the terminal so you can see that. Okay. Now, if you want to see this here, so this is the response actually you got. Okay. Especially. So, this is the summary of that dialogue. Okay. So, that means it's working perfectly, guys. And uh, like one uh, beautiful like uh, app we have created. Uh, okay. See, uh, you can also beautify if you know HTML and CSS. So, you can also create this kinds of uh, online tool as well. Text summarization online tool. So, this kinds of online tool actually you can also create. Okay. If you know HTML code. So it's up to you. I will leave this task to you. So you, you can create this kinds of UI and uh, you can also beautify this project. But here I, I don't know like HTML code very much. Okay. So that's why I am using first API for this. Okay. Uh, you can also use Flask and Django. Okay. With that. But the main thing is like our pipeline, trading pipeline and prediction pipeline. That thing I already showed you entirely. Okay. So that means everything is working perfectly. Now this project is ready for the deployment. Okay. So now what I will do, we'll try to deploy this project, okay, to the AWS cloud, okay. But before that, what I need to do, I need to uh, like commit these are the changes to my GitHub, okay. And one thing I want to tell you, uh, be before see guys, uh, before doing the prediction, okay, you need to uh, make sure you you have this model, okay, you have this artifacts uh, model trainer present here, okay. If it is not present, if your artifacts is not present, okay, then it will throw error, okay. So that time actually you need to train first, okay. After training, you can do the prediction. Make sure this is presented, okay now don't think like every time you need to train okay not like that okay if this artifact is present okay then you can do the prediction let's say i want to again do the prediction so what i will do i will copy the uh like uh, this uh, dialogue okay i will refresh the page okay now if i click on predict again now try it out i will give the text here and i will do the execute see guys okay See, this is the response body. That means uh, you don't need to train the model again and again, okay? If this model trainer is presented inside RFX, that means you can do the prediction. But if, if it is not there, then you can uh, train the model, okay? 
now let me just quickly uh, like push the changes to my github so i'll press ctrl s to stop the execution and i'll clear the terminal uh, git add git commit prediction and ui array sorry now git uh, push origin mail so yeah so i have successfully committed the changes okay now let's uh, do the deployment guys uh, so guys uh, we have completed our entire project implementation now uh, we are ready to deploy this project okay so to deploy this project actually first of all uh, i will integrate docker with this okay because the service actually i'm going to use called uh, elastic container registry okay so this is the service from amazon web service so there actually will uh, first of all like build one uh, docker image of our source code then i will push that uh, docker image to that elastic container registry and from that elastic container registry we'll pull the images okay and i'll uh, run that images in inside my ec2 instance okay so that's how actually we'll be following the entire uh, like you can say deployment okay and this is going to be a completely ci cd deployment uh, let's say whenever you will push your code uh, in your github okay it will automatically get deployed okay so this kinds of CI/CD will be impl implementing and the CI/CD tool actually I'm going to use which is nothing but uh, GitHub action. Okay. So before that, uh, what I will do uh, uh, here, if you see, I have updated the readme file, like how you can uh, execute this project, every steps actually I have uh, like uh, added. And uh, with that, actually, I have also added the deployment steps. Okay. Like how we can deploy this project. So I have already committed the code. Let me show you. See, this is the like how to run. Let's say if you are uh, like uh, cloning this project, then how to set up the project? Every steps actually I have written here. Okay, so maintain readme file is important whenever you are trying to create any end-to-end -end project. Okay, so that other people can use it. Okay, by reading here readme file. Then I have also mentioned like the CI/CD deployment guideline, like how we can uh, do the deployment and every steps actually I have written here. Okay, so first of all, uh, let me tell you the deployment steps actually we are gonna follow. Okay, so the first stage. So the first steps actually will be performing will be like building the docker image of our source code then i'll push that uh, source code to the ecr that means elastic container registry okay then i will launch my ec2 machine that means uh, ec2 is a like virtual machine okay so it then actually will get a virtual machine and i'll pull that uh, like image in our virtual machine okay then i will launch that uh, like you can see docker image inside my ec2 instance okay then i will do, do some port mapping then it would be accessible from the pub public side okay and these are the policy I need, uh, Elastic Container Registry, full access, and my Amazon uh, uh, EC2 access, full access. Okay, this, these are the service actually I need. And all these steps actually I have written down here. So we'll be following these steps, okay? And I'll do the deployment, okay? So uh, first thing actually you, you can do it, you just log in with your IWS account. So for me, I have already logged in with my account, okay? If you don't have any account, so you need you need an account, okay? You just uh, create one account, okay? First of all, it will ask for the credit card. Uh, but once you uh, like open the account okay it will just charge one rupee around okay then after that they will refund the amount okay and you will get some free credits okay to use this amazon web service okay and we'll be uh, using like very small instance okay here in this project i i won't be showing like the gpu instance okay because the gpu instance will take uh, lots of charges okay so that's why i'll launch one as uh, like small instance okay so that actually everybody can do it okay if you're using a free tier access also okay so the first thing actually what i need to do i need to write my docker file so i uh, so at left hand side here you can see i have uh, created one docker file okay i'll open this one so i already prepared the docker file so let me show you like what are the things actually you need to write here so guys uh, these are the command actually you need to execute to create uh, this docker image okay of our source code the first thing actually i'm taking this uh, 3.8 slim uh, buster image okay python image because i created my project inside python 3.7 okay then i need to upgrade my apt okay then uh, with that i also need to upgrade my aws cli okay then after that i will uh, create one folder called app inside app actually i will copy all of my source code okay then then actually i will install my requirement.txt okay with that this three command i also need to run as i already showed you it was creating some issue okay whenever i was training my model at the time we uh, like ran this three command okay so this three command you need to run after that i will launch my app.py okay so this is the like simple docker image i have created okay now let me save it and if you want to do like CI/CD deployment, so one file you need to create inside workflows, okay? Inside dot GitHub slash workflows, I'll click here. One file I will create called main dot yaml, okay? Main dot yaml. So this is going to be my CI/CD uh, like a file, okay? So here actually I'll be writing the logic, and uh, all the code would be deployed automatically, okay? So make sure you have created inside workflows, okay? Now I I can delete this dot 
keep file okay this is not required okay it's done now what i will do i will quickly uh, show the main.yaml content so i already prepared this main.yaml so you can use as it is in your every project okay so you don't need to change anything here okay so this is the main.yaml uh, as you can see here okay so it has three stages one is like uh, continuous integration so inside continuous integration I, i'm not doing anything i'm just echoing some command okay uh, first of all it will like uh, listen for the jobs okay once you will push the code in your main branch okay then it will start doing this deployment then continuous delivery so once your continuous in, uh, integration is like done then it will start the continuous delivery okay inside continuous delivery what i'm doing i'm logging with my aws okay account uh, this is the credential the credential i will set inside the secrets okay just wait then i'm logging with my amazon ecr then i'm build, building the image and i'm after building i'm pushing that image to my ecr okay then inside continuous deployment what i'm doing i'm again logging with my aws account then I, what i'm doing i'm pulling that images from the ecr okay and i'm running inside my ec2 machine that that is the thing actually we are doing uh, is as you can see here okay and this line i have commented out because uh it will actually first of all uh, look for any container is, is running or not okay if any container is running then it will stop the container okay but initially i won't be having any container so that's why i have commented out okay but whenever you will do the deployment for the first time then you will have the container okay then whenever you will be doing the second time push okay of this code at the time just uncomment this line so that actually it can uh like uh, stop the container and it can rerun the container again okay and only change you can do this project name okay if you see this is the project name so for me it's text classification that's why i have given text s okay so this is the project name actually you can change otherwise you can keep it as it is okay no issue so yes guys this is my yaml file and this yaml file you don't need to change anything here everything i have configured and i have kept it here okay so now what i will do uh i'll follow the deployment steps okay one by one then i will try to deploy this project okay so let me go to my github here so the first thing actually what i need to do i need to uh here if you see the uh, cicd deployment first of all logging with your head of this console i have already logged in okay then i need to create one im user okay that means identity access management okay so let me do it so here just come here and search about im okay and let me open the im because i don't want to give all the permission of my account okay i i just need to two permission okay two uh, two resources from this aws account one is like our ecr and one is like ec2 okay so these two services only i need that's why i will create one im and i'll provide this two service access only okay that's why i need it so i will click on click on user so here actually you need to create create a user okay so just click here called add add user okay give the name so i'll just give text s okay that means text summarization okay so i will just click on next and here just select attach policy directly and you, here you need to add some policy okay two policy as i already showed you this two policy you need to add just copy the policy the first policy and uh search here just uh, paste it so it will come here just tick mark it okay after tick mark just close it okay now again copy the second access and paste it here okay and again select it now just click on next because i have only two access okay now as you can see these two access i have provided okay these two access i have provided now what i will do i will just uh, simply create user now text x uh, s is there okay now i'll click on text s then here you will see something called security credential okay so i will just click on security credential and here you have access keys okay now i'll just uh, click on create access keys now i will select the first one command line interface and here I will uh, check mark this understand okay uh, this uh, policies and I will click on next then here you don't need to provide anything just click uh, create access keys okay now see this is your access keys now you can download it download it as csv file okay I will download it as csv file okay just keep this csv file because I need it later on okay now what I will do I will go back uh, to my AWS now the second thing what I need to do I have already created my am user okay with this policies now I have to create the ECR repository okay to save my docker image again I will come here and I'll search for ECR okay EC r just search ecr so something called elastic container history okay just go go inside ecr now i'll click on get started okay just give the name uh yeah so i'll click on create repository now it should be private okay i will just keep it as private you can also keep it public okay now give the name here okay so i'll just give text uh, text x that means text summarization okay then i won't be giving anything here i will just create repositories okay it's done now copy this uri i will just click here to copy now open up your readme file and just save the uri here somewhere okay because i need this uri 
as you can see here uh, just for demo purpose i saved one uri here okay see this is the uri i will just change it because uh, i need this uri later on that's why i've just saved it okay here later on i'll be using it i'll save it now i'll go back okay so we have successfully created the ecr repository as well now i need to launch my ec2 machine okay so again i will go back to the services and here i will search for ec2 okay so i'll just search for ec2 this is the virtual service in the cloud okay now here i will just click on launch instance okay launch instance so give the instance name so i'll just give uh, text s machine okay and here i will select ubuntu okay you just also select ubuntu then here actually you can select which kinds of instance actually you want okay if you are are uh, doing deep learning project okay and if you need gpu okay see you can select this instance okay but it will uh, like charge a lot uh, so that's why i won't be taking but you can take see because see we we have to train the model because we have created the entire pipeline training pipeline as well prediction pipeline as well okay so if you want to train it on cloud so you, you need to go with gpu instance okay but if you if you want to do it on cpu you can also do it i will select this this one okay so i'm selecting this one because most of you won't be having this, uh, that much of money okay so that's why I will be selecting this one. But let's say whenever you are creating your actual project and you need a GPU machine at that time, just go with these are the machine. Okay. As you can see, deep learning, AMI, GPU, PyTorch. Okay. So just select the PyTorch service, which PyTorch version actually will be, you are using. You can select uh, the version here and you can take the machine. Okay. But I won't be selecting the GPU machine because it will charge a lot. So I'll, I'll take this machine only. Okay. Ubuntu server, uh, this, this machine. This is a free trial uh, eligible already. Okay. So this is the machine actually I will take. Yeah uh yeah now after that what i will do uh, just keep it as it is okay now here you can select the instance type okay so this this is what actually i will be increasing a little bit because if you see this t2 micro is like very small and it has just one gb memory okay it's like very less okay less memory but i at least i need 16 gb memory or 8 gb memory for this deep learning project uh, so this is an nlp project so it uh, because see whenever you load the text data it needs more memory so better if you are taking bigger instance okay so i'll take this uh, t2 uh x large okay this one 16 gb memory at least okay i will take this one you can also go with uh, smaller memory but i will take this one at least okay now you can create one key pair here okay so i'll just click on create a key pair give any name i'll just give a uh, uh, text okay text key and i'll just create a uh, create a key pair okay so whenever you want to like access your ec2 machine from your local computer okay using putty or any other like services called mobile stream at a time you need this spam file okay but i won't be using this one but i i've just created okay now you can select it here from here text key okay select it here because you need to select it here it is mandatory okay now uh everything would be default okay so now i will select this uh, two things allow https and allow http uh now here you just need to take uh like uh storage size so here i will take at least uh 13 gb storage okay because uh it will again generate the model and all okay so you need 13 gb at least okay now everything should be as default uh, yeah i think uh storage 13 gb yeah i think now uh, let's uh, launch the instance okay so i'll click on launch inst instance Now uh, here I will just click on view instance. Okay, see my instance is running, so status should be running. Okay, whenever it's running, just now click on uh, instance ID. Okay, now here you will see one button called connect. I will just click on connect, and I will just click on connect. So it will launch me a one terminal. Okay, here. So from here actually I will execute some of the command. okay guys see this is the terminal now let me clear it okay so now the first thing what i need to do uh, after launching this ec2 machine okay you need to execute these are the command okay i have already mentioned now copy let's copy one by one first of all i need to do sudo update okay then let me clear it now what i will do i will uh run this second command here basically i am doing my package manager update here okay 
just provide yes that means y just write y and press enter so guys if you are getting this kinds of window just press enter from your keyboard okay so it will disappear and i think it will be done yeah so it's done now i'll clear it yeah so we have successfully updated my package manager now i need to install docker here okay because this is the new machine okay and here i don't have an install anything okay so first of all i need to install docker here so these are the command you need to execute just run one by one okay now i'll run this command now this is the last command you just need to run it okay now let me clear the terminal now to check your docker is running just write this command docker uh, space hyphen hyphen version okay now if i press enter now see this is the docker version this is the version it's running okay that means everything is fine now what i need to do um, i need to configure my easy 2 machine as self hosted runner okay so for this i need to go to my project settings so i'll open my uh, let me open it in a new tab yeah so what i'll do i'll first of all go to settings make sure you are your uh, repository you are using okay this uh, text summarization now left hand side you will see something called action okay i'll click on action then there is a option called runner okay i'll click on runner then here you need to click, click on new self hosted runner okay now here just select this linux machine and just keep it as everything as default now let's copy the command one by one i will copy the first command i'll open my two instance okay then i will paste it here okay now again i'll come here i'll copy the second command now i'll paste it here basically what i'm doing i'm just connecting my github with my ec2 machine okay so that uh, whenever i will do the commit okay it will automatically get to know there is something new code uploaded and it will take the code in the ec2 machine and it will execute okay so this is what this is what actually we are doing now i'll copy that third command paste it here yeah now let's copy one by one let's copy all all the like command and execute now i need a two command more this is the command I need to execute see it is telling github action that means it is making the connection now it is asking for the like uh guru runner group name okay i will give uh empty i'll just press enter okay i won't be providing anything now it is asking for enter the name of the runner group here i, I just need to pass self hosted just write self hyphen hosted okay make sure you have given this hyphen okay self hyphen hosted now press enter now everything just keep it as default just press enter again just press enter okay now it is already done now what i will do i will copy the last command and it will make the connection okay see it is connected to github and listening for jobs okay now one thing i i want to show you here if i now go to my uh, runner okay now if you see this is idle okay that means it's running okay now if i uh, like close it this say if this execution i i stop okay let me press control c so see this execution closed now if i refresh this page okay now if you see this is offline okay so you need to always keep it as running okay so to run this one again you need to run the same command uh, this command you need to execute okay okay see again it's uh, running and listening for the jobs if i come here and refresh here see it's idle again okay now this thing is done so we have successfully configured our self-hosted runner as you can see uh yeah now what i need to do i need to setting up my github secrets okay so let's set, set up so again i will come uh here to my project uh now here i will go to settings there i have something called sick uh, like this one secret and variable okay i'll click here and i'll select the action okay now here you will see one option called new repository secret i'll just click here and now the first secret you need to add i have added everything here just copy paste from here only okay yeah the first thing you need to add your aws secret key id just copy the name 
come here paste it here okay and you just need to provide the secret i think you remember we downloaded one uh, csv file a uh, text access keys okay i'll open this one using notepad plus plus okay just copy till comma okay this this is your access key id i will copy and i will uh, paste it here add secret okay it's done now again i will click on new repository secret now again i will add the second one okay this one new, uh, secret access keys paste it here now let's copy the value so this is the value just copy before the comma okay paste it here and don't share this secret with anyone otherwise they will be also able to access your account i'm showing because uh, i will delete my uh, user okay after the recording i will delete it so you won't be able to access it okay just uh, keep it as secret that's why i'm keeping everything as github secret okay so that other people can't access this thing okay now new repository secret again i will copy the third one region make sure you know your region aws region so for me actually i'm inside uh, north virginia which is means uh us east one okay just select your region uh, first of all check your reason which reason you are in just copy the name and try to write here okay let's say you are inside asia pacific that means you need to write ap south one instead of e us east one okay so for me it is us east one okay so i'll just write it here only so let's me copy the name us east one pass it here now again i'll click on new repository secret all the secret you need to add one by one now i'll i need my aws ecr login uri I think you remember I saved my URI inside my README file. Okay, this is the URI. Let's me copy uh, till this dot com. Okay, don't take the slash text this thing. I'll paste it here. Add secret. Now the last secret I need to add, which is nothing but our ECR repository name. This one. Let me copy. Uh, so what is the name of the ECR? So it is text text. Okay, just copy the name give it here okay so all the uh, steps are done now we are ready to deploy our project okay let me click on text summarizer project now let me uh, push the changes okay so as you can see i can push the changes right now so once i push my changes so it will start deployment okay let me first of all clear my terminal so what i will do i'll just write git add then git commit hyphen m ci cd added okay then let's do pushing git push origin main okay so it's uploading now it's done now let me go to my repository so this is my repository now you can close one because i have opened two okay i'll now if i refresh my page here now you'll see uh, our action is running see there there is a yellow mark you can see now just click on action now see ci cd added it's running okay now i'll come here now see continuous integration is done now continuous delivery is running that means it is uh, building my docker image and it will push my docker image to the ecr okay so it will take some time let's wait okay see all the jobs would be running automatically you don't have to do anything okay you just need to write that yaml file main.yml file everything would be done automatically just you need to push your code in your github and everything would be automatically deployed okay see build and tag push the is here okay this uh, jobs is running right now so it will set up everything all the requirements everything it will set up and everything it will push okay it is completely amazing that's why i prefer this uh, github action okay because it has uh, already integrated everything so i don't need to set up here anything here but you can also integrate jenkins okay jenkins and uh, circle ci as a ci cd tool you can explore from your side okay uh, but in future i will create some more project okay with that also but recently this uh, github action is like more uh, popular because it has all the setup so here you don't need to manual set up here anything okay so that is why now let's wait okay i will come back once it is done Uh, so guys as you can see our uh, continuous delivery is done now continuous deployment is running okay so basically it will pull the image from my ecr and it will run in my uh, ec2 instance okay so let's wait it will take some time so guys uh, 
all the uh, like you can say uh, action is completed uh, now let me go to my um, here instance okay so i'll click on my instance let's go inside my instance okay now what i need to do uh, if i see if i just copy my this one ip address okay let me copy the ip address and if i paste it here so it won't be running because we haven't done the port mapping okay because i am i was using port number 8080 as you can see here if i go to my app.py 8080 okay so i need to uh add it okay so to add it actually i will come here and here is a like option called security okay i'll click on security now uh, this is the security groups just click on this link now you will get something called end bounds okay ready and bound so i'll click click here now you need to add rules here i will click on add rules just keep it as custom tcp just add the port here okay so it is 8080 okay now i'll select a 00 now everything will as default and i will just click on save rules okay it's done now let me go back to my instance okay now if i come here this ip address now let's keep a uh, clone port number 8080 okay now it should run see guys uh, this is my uh ui as you already saw this okay so now actually you can first uh, train okay you can train your model so first of all you need to train your model for training just click here try out and click on execute so it will take time because uh I launched just CPU instance, okay, and here it will take time to train your model, okay. So you can try it, okay. So after training, what you can do, just uh, do the prediction here, okay. So yes, guys, we have successfully deployed our project and it is running perfectly everything, okay. Now for the second time, whenever you are committing your code, make sure you have act activated this thing. Just uncomment this three line and try to uh, push your code because your uh, one container is running okay currently and if you are doing for the second time you need to uncomment it so that it will stop the container it will rerun it again okay so in this case we have successfully completed our entire project and it is uh, working perfectly now let me show you like how we can stop the instance because after uh like uh deployment whenever you will be uh, stopping your instance okay how we can do it because it will uh like charge a lot okay if you just keep on running it okay so to uh, like uh stop the instance just come come to your instance okay just select the instance okay and click here instance type and just start terminate it okay so it will terminate so let me close it also because we have already terminated but for you if you want to keep it on running just keep it on running okay so i have already terminated see it is shutting down after that it will delete okay now what i need to do i need to also delete my uh ecr repository so i'll visit to my elastic container So this is the repository i'll just select and delete it so just write delete here and click on delete okay it's done now i will uh, delete my im user as well i'll search about im user click on user and uh, let me delete this text s okay now I'll click on delete. Just write the name. Click on delete. Okay, so it would be deleted. So yes, guys, uh, I think uh, we have completed the entire project. Okay, so I think you liked it and you have learned a lot, like how to implement this kinds of end-to-end -end project. Okay, so you can still beautify this project. Okay, by adding some more functionality. So I will uh, keep this thing on you. So just try to explore and add these other thing. And if you liked uh, this uh, project implementation, so uh you can follow me okay so you can also visit my youtube channel so this is my youtube channel guys uh ds with bappi just search about ds with bappi and you can subscribe to my channel also so yes guys uh this is all about uh okay of this project implementation and we have successfully completed so uh in future actually i will uh bring up some new project as well okay uh with some new features okay so that actually it will give you like more entire idea okay so now what you can do just take take up any problem statement and try to build uh, this kinds of project okay by referring this template as it is okay so yes guys this is all about from this video and uh, mm -hmm. i hope you like this video and i hope you enjoyed the entire series okay so yes guys uh, thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you next time